Gamers Podcast. Five Pillars of Mad Monarch Production. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa to dear brothers, sisters, friends, and the foes out there. And welcome to a special episode of the Blood Brothers Podcast, a general election special. Forget about the thumb wars, forget about the arm wrestlers, forget about the barneying. Today we're going to establish who is a Muslim and a non Muslim for voting or not voting. I'm entirely joking everyone needs to relax i have two uh, very dear brothers of mine um on today's show to discuss uh not just the issue of voting but the general election generally uh and the activism of the muslim community we have dr salman but editor of islam 21c the host of the unscripted podcast Assalamu alaikum. And we have the legendary, the Don Corleone of the debating scene, Abdullah Andalusi of the Muslim it. Debate Initiative. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My dear brothers, how are you both? Alhamdulillah, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm, good, I'm, good. I'm, looking very, I'm looking very forward to today's podcast. So I took all the photos to make sure that, you know, all the happy smiles are there. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen in this podcast. We might end up becoming even better friends. Inshallah, so, inshallah. Inshallah. If anything, I'll be honest with you, brothers, and I said and I said this to you both uh, before the podcast is that if there's one thing I want people and Muslims to take out from this podcast is if we are going to engage in this discussion or some of the discussions that we're going to discuss is to do it in a brotherly and respectful way, uh, and secondly to try at least get to the most closest truth and most pleasing thing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Would you guys agree with that? Of course, not definitely. Wicked. Yeah, I wanted to get you a gift on the way. Didn't you get the, me anything? The labor merchandise shop was closed. I might find something. Actually, no, I'm joking. But um, maybe a mug or something that says vote Jezza. <laughs> or a t-shirt. <laughs> Are we allowed like to say, like, vote Corbyn or something like you that? You can say or? that because I don't think you're a faith leader, are you? Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give up my position. So, so, just so I can say that. <laughs> any spiritual rewards or spiritual uh, punishments is yeah. or something. Spiritual punishments for it. Well, let me get the ball rolling. Like saying it's Let me... Always oh, cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let's get the ball rolling first, yeah? And I think it's important to get this kind of out of the way before we go into other relevant topics. I want to establish what each of your respective positions is with regards to Muslims voting in a secular, liberal, democratic elections like the ones we have here in Europe and some would argue around the world uh, for political parties that overtly do not legislate uh, according to Islam or any kind of reference to anything Islamic or even according to their own theology, right? Mm. So let me start with you, Abdullah. What is your position on this matter, bro? As in, is it, is it haram? Is it kafir? Is it makru? Is it permissible? Is it wajib? Okay, well, wajib or just permissible? <laughs> um, well, first and foremost, I'm just a da'i, so I don't give fatawa, and I only follow fatawa. And as a da'i, our kind of, let's say, remit is only to explain um, where issues where there's no ikhtilaf in Islam, the general accepted ideas, and obviously invite non-Muslims to that, and inviting Muslims to those generally accepted ideas that we all agree with. And apart from that, the only remit I would have in terms of fatawa is only uh, is to follow the opinion that is that makes the most sense to me, and where the scholars have explained it in such a degree that it concords with what we see in reality, and, and therefore it's the strongest opinion uh, that I would you know believe in, and I would have to as a Jude, as a Muslim, it's my duty to follow it. Yeah. Uh, so I can't really. It's not my position as in my fatawa. I follow. I'm a mere follower. So what position have you adopted on this matter? Well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a matter of um, of ihtilaf exactly. I would say it's a matter of um, currently Muslims, perhaps in, in, in this day and age, uh, without the, the Khilafah system long long gone and without active teaching of political philosophy, um, there's a lot of uh, confusion out there. So I don't uh, impugn any Muslim uh, or I don't uh, blame any Muslim in particular because there's a, a general lack of confusion. Uh, so it's a general confusion and a lack of understanding with regards to um, the, the tiny nuances of of Western civilization itself. I mean, I, I, I teach a course on on Western civilization, Western civilization at the Quran Institute for that precise purpose, just to help you know educate Muslims. Anyway, so let's look at the reality of the situation, and then let's look at the ahkam and let's you know make a comparison, which is how you meant, how it was explained by the scholars, uh, by scholars which have discussed this. Could we potentially work if you don't mind me asking? Could we yeah. potentially work backward, Abdullah, as in yeah. like this is the position I follow and this is why I follow it? Well, okay. Look, I mean, as, as a Muslims, we believe that. 
the the hukum is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, that, that as Muslims we have to follow we have to implement um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands and we not we don't refer to hud which is that which goes against his commands or other sources of of um, rules morals values and so on and so forth because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the universe he determined our very purpose and purpose is linked to basically what is the good what is the bad and therefore to derive it from any other source um, would be setting up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. technically speaking, mm. um, as a type of shuk. Um, and that, I think, more Muslims... No, no, wait, wait, well, no. All Muslims generally understand <laughs> this. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, all Muslims generally understand this. Um, I, I don't think there's any you know, dispute apart from with secular reformists. Wait till someone opens this <laughs> Well, anyway, no. <laughs> Then, uh, <laughs> um, Let's try and stay Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Like something I tell myself in the mirror every morning. The the work the basically uh, Muslims tend to think that it's who you are doing your ritualized prayers to uh, that determines shirk or not. But it's actually everything because uh, Islam isn't secularized. It's not only ibadah, but everything else. Your your life, your purpose, how you measure things, the good and bad. You can derive it from the sources, and that doesn't go against Allah's um, dominion. He has full dominion over all things. So uh, that's that's the stated principle. There's no to laugh um, that I've encountered with any Muslim other than secular. Is, from your understanding, is there an ikhtilaf on this issue? It's hard to... We'll get, we'll get to it, but just a yay or nay and we'll get to it. It's hard to understand exactly what your issue If your issue is um, Allah determines hukum ultimately, yeah. Yeah, then that's, that's, that's like saying Allah owns everything. Yeah, of course that's true. Fine, we'll get to that. Hello, of back course, to but I, I mean, um, should, should if you're saying yeah. therefore, then, um, then no human being can determine anything by or legislate, which is a new kind of translation, I would contend. Um, then it's a bit like saying no human being owns anything, because ownership is for Allah. See what I'm saying? So the devil's in the detail. If you mean, okay, ultimate legislation and, and, and that kind of stuff, then of course that's for Allah. But it doesn't mean human beings are not supposed to legislate because the, the what's understood from those ayat that are used often to say, in الْحُكُمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا عَنْزَ اللَّهِ etc. etc. Um, there's an implicit command to Legislate. The point is, legislate according to what Allah wants you to legislate according to. Exactly. And that's exactly what I'm referring to. So if, which you, if you're referring to that as a general kind of thing, I don't think any Muslim, even the secular reformist, I don't think even they would disagree with that because it's such a... Really? Which, well, which my, was my point. But I mean, just to, I, I suppose to make it crystal clear what, what we're discussing, um, if you were to pray to an idol, a false idol, you don't, in effect, make the idol into an infinite or powerful creature that in create the whole universe by doing so. Mm -hmm. You just merely consider it to be an alternative um, source to God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you, you declare it to be an alternative equal to um, or taking the position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Even you can't make it that reality. Likewise, um, ultimately, ultimately, we don't own anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns our bodies, owns all the material possessions. Mm -hmm. And technically speaking, how we interact with, with objects in the world and ourselves is as an amana to look after God's property. So actually, I would say we could view it like that. But in practice, it, it's we can call it uh, customarily like property. Like, you know, this is my property, this car or this house or what mm. have you, right? I mean, they just um, use, for example, milk instead of mulk. But the, yeah. the idea is Pos possession still that, or you know, uh, control, really. You um, own something, but what is understood when a Muslim is talking about this is mine, this is yours, he doesn't mean subhanAllah, independent of Allah. Of course, of you course. Know, so I mean, milk to really refer in the Arabic, it kind of refers to um, in, in the grasp of, it's similar to the um, to the, the Latin word term, uh, manus, meaning in, in the hand, and manumission mm -hmm. to release from the hand. Okay. But anyway, um, Anyway, to, before we go into linguistics, so that's clear. However, when it comes to issues of um, democracy, the principle behind democracy um, ultimately was always that uh, humans are the sovereign over themselves and their affairs, and they are the ultimate reference point to affairs. So, in essence, it's uh, your the purpose of democracy is in essence to manifest the sovereign will of of the collective electorate into a representative that will represent their um, the, the collective uh, legislative sovereignty to determine their own good and bad. Is there any level of consensus from a classical point of view and from a kind of post-enlightenment point of view? Is there any kind of consensus on this definition? 
I would say, well, in essence, I mean, if we look at... Not in practice, not in manifestation. Yeah. Well, okay, so if you look at the ancient Greek understanding, so the term democracy was more, was more referring to a structure of society. So basically it was where the popular demos, or usually the poor people, as it was usually referred to, the, ma the masses, uh, they're the ones who vote out of their own interest to satisfy their own interest, making good and bad according to what is their own interest. So in that way, you could say that is exactly the, the definition that it fits. Um, both Plato and Aristotle agree, uh, kind of concurred with this, and they were very apprehensive and also uh, kind of condemning of uh, democracy for that reason. They, they view that all the higher systems like politeia um, or aristocracy or what have, or in, the enlightened uh, monarch under a constitutional state. Um, the word constitution in Greek, uh, politeia, also the same word, uh, translates as dean in Arabic, actually. It means way of life, values, ideas, culture, everything, your religion, all that is politeia, actually. So a system under a dean, in essence, a leader, controlled and working within a system of a dean, of a particular dean. Okay, that's, that's, that's that one thing done. Now with the Enlightenment philosophers who are kind of picking up um, kind of Greek thoughts and ideas, looking at what to do in this matter. Uh, usually with Christians, it was the case that the ruler rules according to uh, God's law in the, the Bible. There's ikhtilaf amongst Christians as to what parts of the Bible you are still applicable, what have been abrogated. But generally the ruler is meant to rule according to his Christian conscience uh, based on what he thinks God would want him to do, because God is a legislator. That was not debated. What happened with uh, Thomas Hobbes and Locke, who came around a bit later, is they tried to avoid all the con the contradictions, the problems with between um, multiple Protestant factions, all arguing with each other as to who should be the head of state, which religion should be the head of head of the um, or the the head religion of the state, and implemented. Including, including who's a heretic, who's not a heretic, which just causes lots of problems. So instead, um, Locke just comes out saying, you know, we need to base this on natural law. And obviously Hugo Grotius um, came up with the idea of natural law, saying that a natural law for human rights, that would be true even if God didn't exist, which is what he said. God, if, even if God would be true, even if God didn't exist. And Locke basically argued that, and this is where the basis of, you could say, the conceptualization of individualism comes from. He just said that basically humans are sovereign, and they, are, they own themselves and they are full, complete masters of themselves and fully sovereign over themselves. And the, in political structures, the structure is mainly to represent their sovereignty. Although, obviously, Hobbes iterated the same thing. Simplified for our viewers and listeners, for yeah. whom some or many love this, would even, they're unaware of or it's yeah. gone over their head. Yeah. How is it relevant or irrelevant to the issue of voting in a democracy? From a, from, from a point of permissibility or impermissibility. What you've just mentioned about sovereignty uh, and, 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 the, and, and, and democracy as a governing structure, etc. From a simplified point of view, how does how is this any of this relevant to a Muslim voting on December the 12th? Or is okay. it 13th? 12th. Okay. Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so it's good to know if the, the date of the, of the vote, if you're going to be advocating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. Um, uh, what a sly one and make people turn up on the wrong on day. On the wrong day. And it's like, <laughs> where, where is it, buddy? It's the 13th. Okay. Um, <laughs> 13th is actually Friday, Friday the 13th. Okay. okay, so basically, you voting in the current Western system is considered to be you exercising your sovereignty over yourself to determine your own good and bad and elect a representative that would, in, in the phrases of Edmund Burke, uh, think for you and your interests for you to, to act on your behalf of your best interests, according to obviously man being the measure of all things. Mm. So humans being the measure of, uh, of what is uh, good and bad in their own interests. So that's so basically your voting is, is you participating and, and, and making that declaration, because that's the whole point of uh, democracy is to legitimize the basis of the system. Um, and to explain that is, the government, according to liberal, uh, secular liberalism, is only legitimate if it represents the sovereignty of the people. And that can only happen by regular voting. Okay. And in essence, as I think John Locke kind of intimated, um, uh, it, voting is bayer as well. So it's, and that's why politicians, they're so eager for everyone to vote. Even, look, look they don't need... 100% of the vote. I mean, why do they need, uh, why are they worried that only 30% people turn up or 30 or 20% people turn up? Why are they worried about this? It's because it shows disenfranchisement of the system. They need it to be regularly legitimized. In essence, you have to repeatedly give your consent. 
So given the system. So given they, just just movements are made to reduce the number of people voting all the time. And we are, we are going to get to your entire your yeah. entire tafsir on Abdullah's uh, commentary <laughs> uh, on the democratic. But before I do go over to you, Abdullah, so if I'm correct in understanding, and this is the crux of ultimate. So must you're from from the ijtihad that you've adopted from a scholar or a number of scholars, or whichever one that you've adopted, do you believe... The majority of scholars, uh, for a good point, a good a good point in time. Although I said it, it, it goes up and down and fluxes depending on political situation in the Muslim <laughs> world. So do you believe it to be halal? Um, I would say that I would say that participation in um, secular democracy uh, would be... Uh, the, the opinion that is followed and the, what these scholars have mentioned is that they say, these scholars say, that it is pr- um, prohibited to, um, to vote... You said, for you, legislative you said, uh, individuals. You said secular democracy. So is there any yeah. Islamic democracy? No, I just want to make absolutely certain uh, the system because there is sometimes a confusion in the Muslim world concerning um, what is meant by the term democracy or what have you. Okay. Um, I, I would argue we should use the Western understanding because they are the ones who coined it. Mm. But in case there's any confusion for uh, non-English speakers, okay. I shouldn't say the word secular democracy. Okay. So, Man, over to you. Now, I know you have some very interesting <laughs> views uh, with regards to democracy, whether it is Islamic or un-Islamic. Um, so I guess I'll ask you as well, bro. Um, you've obviously adopted an ijtihad or a scholar's ijtihad on this matter. Um, do you deem it to be something that's mubah, permissible, or, or haram, or kufr, or an obligation? Alhamdulillah, Okay. See, the thing here is, I mean, Abdullah nailed, the, nailed it on the head. Really? Right. And that is, you talked about, you made it use a very important phrase, it makes sense to me. Yeah. And one thing that I always say to people is that it does make sense, by the way. Just because something makes sense, it doesn't mean it's true from in every case. Right, and this is um, what we see here is, in my view, um, a difference between two differing worldviews and approaches to to moral philosophy or, or ethics. Yeah, um, you see, as as someone who was born and raised in the West, I'm, and especially people who studied um, STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, math, we have a particular way we go about things and how we kind of analyze things. Right, to to understand something, we take parts of it maybe words in the definition or something we take it into abstract characterize it maybe find some source from quran and about it and then we put it back into the bigger picture and do that with all the parts to understand the, the whole picture that's radically different in my experience to, to the method of the fuqaha right the, the method of islamic fiqh is this what you is, is, of, is, is this what you've coined some time as post-colonial 1920s no 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 this is what i call normally reductionist um, uh, approach to to fiqh or to to masail, right? Because it's very easy, and and somehow I, I understand where it comes from because the books of fiqh as they've been written and also they mention a ruling and then they mention a proof, for example, right? They mention, might mention the, the the hadith of the chapter or something, and it's easy to get into the uh, in, to get the impression that okay, if I get have a hadith for something and I can prove it or you know it goes that way. No, the reason. The, the 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 way rulings are come the way rulings come about is radically different to how they're presented in in a, in, in books of fiqh and so. So explain to me what so explain so, to me from so what, for from, example what Abdullah from said angle, from what one, Abdullah, from what yeah. Abdullah said what kind of classical usuli principle do you think is absent in what he has said? It's going in the wrong direction. What direction should we? So make? it's going in the direction of looking at the theory. What does democracy mean? What does what does Hobbes or John Stuart Mill or John Locke say about voting that precise thing? Um, and does it, uh, is there an Islamic ruling for that? The ruling is haram because that's why Z, yeah? So it will go from the perspective of um, legislation is only belong to Allah, um, putting an X on the paper that is, according to this philosopher and that kind of tradition, this is giving your consent to someone or giving your, or you're deputizing someone to go and legislate on your behalf. Therefore, it's haram. Right now, the problem with that is the way a faqih is trained to look at things. I'm not a faqih, but the ones I speak to, and, and you look at the major fiqh councils in the world, for example, they've said pretty much voting in a democracy, uh, they say in the shade of a, a Almani yeah, secular democracy, is permissible. If not, they're debating is it wajib or not? 
they're not on is it haram or is it permissible or whatever I uh, thought you used the term dunyawiya as opposed to an anmani because yeah. dunyawiya uh, really specifically denotes this worldly only whereas yeah. um, sorry this grab, but they usually translate it as um, yeah. almani yeah of course <laughs> but uh, you were saying someone so the difference is they look at it from the other angle they look at it from the what is the what is the uh, position of the morally responsible person mukallaf right so they'll say somebody's coming up to me he's asking me a question should i vote or not in xyz country they'll look at who is coming up to you they'll look at um you know which party what is, is their on? trajectory the yeah. person individual asking the question then they'll look at the time and the place then they'll look at um what are the alternative scenarios that we could advise this person to do scenario a scenario b scenario c now the problem is it's very interesting knowing the uh, what western philosophers say about themselves and their claim to democracy and that has its place but with all due respect the fuqaha and the fiqh councils they're clear that this is pretty much irrelevant to the issue of giving a fatwa and this might be shocking to us if we if we're kind of um, used to the, the 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 other methodology of looking at the theory and then building up a picture based on, on on abstract kind of meanings of things because for them what you're saying would only come into the picture if the person asking is faced with the choice of do i maybe for example i don't know name islamic country x that isn't doesn't have any democracy at all saudi arabia okay they imagine they're coming out and saying we're thinking of, demo- uh, of uh, accepting or adopting secular democracy as you described it that is when the 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 faqih or the mufti would jump in and say actually abdullah the lucy has done this research and etc etc that was that when they might say right so because you, so you for might... them for, in in the manhaj of the the fuqaha they're not looking at an abstract uh, ruling rather they're looking at a particular instance and what other uh, you know different choices for the individual but someone you, someone, you know, you, someone you seem to be unequivocally claiming if i may interject Habibi, yeah? yeah you seem to be unequivocally claiming okay fine western fiqh councils no 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 across the muslim world okay fine abdullah so you just wanted to speak. Yeah. abdullah mm. you published an article it's on five pillars pro voting muslims versus anti voting muslims and you issued a list of 87 scholars Mm. the list here yeah uh, none of them are from the uk majority are from the arab world uh, and you've claimed in your article that they all believe that participating in secular democracy is haram um for, yeah from what's been reported uh, from what's been reported yeah. so you've made an unequivocal claim that the majority of overwhelming majority of ulama believe it to be forget about haram or kufr you're you're saying they're debating with this wajib or just mubah whereas you've made a claim that generally speaking overwhelming ulama that you're aware of are against it that's very true let me explain this position. right explain because it. what's happening is i'm guessing because i remember those lists they used to go around in <laughs> university back in the day as well uh if you look at the names on those lists yeah if you look at the actual fatwas yeah they some of them even stood for election right for crying out loud they they, like they're who? saying uh like who? i remember someone was mentioning uh ulama Iqbal, muhammad Iqbal, for example he is not mentioning uh mulana maududi for example he had not on this uh, list i don't know about that one but ahmed shaki for example i think he was on that list he is and different people they and sheikh ibn baz sheikh ibn uthaymin and, and sulman al-awda and so many people so they're talking they what were the person who got that from uh from the 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 kalam they probably i'm guessing they were talking about a very specific thing i.e what you're talking about generally speaking can a man go and start legislating by himself and uh, you know away from what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants but the point is you have to look at their fatwa you have to look at their when somebody comes and asks them right um who should i vote for in so and so election because you know some of them even said it could be obligatory Right. Okay, fine. So you've 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 mentioned what you've mentioned regarding. Uh, but anyway, let me just finish the, the the big difference. But I do though, want to know your position on it. Yeah, the big difference though between the two methods. Mm. What I'm what I'm contending is the the method of fiqh, Islamic fiqh, tradition, even schools of thought and so forth, and the the kind of um, uh, the kind of scientific, if I can say that approach. Um, one of the biggest difference is um, the method of fuqaha 
they're never looking at one issue because it's never a, 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 a time in the slave's life mm. outside of very specific ibadat. There's never a time where you're subject to just one Islamic text or consideration. And that's the big... It's a grand claim that you've made. It's a grand mm. claim that you've made, which I do want Abdullah's thoughts on. But I also want, before I hand it over to Abdullah, I want to know two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's a grand claim to say that those ulama or fiqh councils who deem it to be either wajib or permissible mm -hmm. are on the trajectory of normative fiqh and normative with usuli principles. You've you've made you've kind of you've said that basically, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And number and that's a grand claim, and I'm sure Abdullah would agree if that's a, if if that's a grand claim, because you would then suggest that those who are of the opposing view, whether they number five or five hundred are reductionist and, and I haven't to be honest I haven't come across any fatwa mm -hmm. I've been searching a lot and asking people around um, where that actually says that Muslim for example in UK are voting in a minor, as a minority in a non-Muslim un-Islamic kind of majority non-Muslim country I have not come across a fatwa from a scholar I think most of the ulama that, the, most of the ulama that and they are predominantly located in the Muslim world I think their position is that in its asal Period, irrelevant of where you are, is haram. Yeah, but the point is, we have so many fatawa of the, to the contrary. Okay. Right? And we need a reason. Okay. These fatawa, they don't exist, okay. in my okay. opinion. I've not been, been looking. Okay. okay, so fine. So, so now can And you... I would also contend, be a bit more radical here, that outside of Saudi Arabia and Egyptian scholarship and the, the immediate area around them... And Syria. Um, and Jordan. We don't find... Um, and this same kind of anti-democracy rhetoric in the rest of the Ummah, in Pakistan, India, in Malaysia, Indonesia, the, the Ummah is vast, mm. right? We have people who've influenced, who've been influenced by that dawah, right? But in terms of like the Muslim world, you have scholars entering into, you know, mainstream politics mm. and scholars, you know, so, Jamaat Islami in Pakistan and India and Bangladesh. They're scholars. So uh, now, so, so now, explain to me before I hand you over to Abdullah. What is the position that you have adopted regarding this general election or general elections in the UK? Is it mubah? Is it obligation? Is it something that's permissible? Or is well, Sheikh kind of. So you've adopted uh, Sheikh Haidt's position. I don't have a position myself. For me, it's. I mean, for me, that conversation is for the people not who think it's haram. That's for the people who need waking up. Okay. Who who are just kind of you know thinking that it's maybe something. So you've adopted Sheikh Haitham's position on this. Um, just yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So 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 you, yeah. so you would regard Muslims in the UK it's obligatory for them to vote. Most some of them, yeah. Some okay. of them. And depending what, on it, and, and see, what, it depends on the 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 person. It depends on the consequences. And right? what's the principle? What is it, on what basis is it? Because because I, I feel that the discussion has gone beyond the lesser of two evils. That that's the discussion that's done and dusted with. See the, now, the, again, the, one of the reasons why some people might think people who talked about voting they think it's an evil, is because of the usage of the word lesser of two evils or uh, the the lighter of the two harms. Or so you're saying that. Thing. So you're saying you don't even think that applies. No, the, the, the ulama that said, that used that phrase that expression they didn't mean what some people are taking it to mean now. They're talking about, for example, you've got two, you know, shaitans, vote for the lesser of the, the, the two evils. That doesn't mean voting itself is the lesser of two evils. That's but, a very but, important But one could easily say that all the political parties are shaitan and shayateen, especially... Fair enough, but even if that may be the case, but the point is, saying vote for the lesser of two evils does not mean voting in principle, in theory, is lesser of two evils. Okay, we'll get to that. So, yeah. so, so you deem it to be obligatory... Uh, it could be, it could okay. be. For but, many but definitely people. permissible. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and and it, it, do you also factor in the issue of maslaha and maslaha, the, the harm and benefit issue? That is something that overrides everything, okay. right? And the, the, the sad thing is that... But that requires tangible, calculated thinking. It for only requires for, anything for if example, somebody already presumes voting to be something bad and dirty. You see, we have echoes as a community. We have echoes of voting, anti-voting rhetoric and fatwas from decades gone past that we still haven't, we're still kind of hearing um, echoes of. So even those who do vote, maybe internally, subconsciously, some of them, they might think we're doing something bad or we can only vote if it, if it makes a big, massive difference that is tangible and so forth. You're saying but, that's not even relevant. That's not even, you, you don't need to prove to yourself that there's a big massive consequence if you're doing something as as benign as choosing between coffee and tea right theoretically right 
You're just going to be like, I feel like this day or whatever. Okay. Yeah, you just see what I mean? So the point of the, 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 the elections is, the elections kind of only comes every few years, right? The point is, this is a bigger thing. We'll talk, hopefully we'll talk about we that. Will, we will. But the, 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 we have to in, get over this hurdle that it's something dirty, something bad in the first place, right? And now, I understand where Abdullah is coming from because he's looking at the history and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But there, there's a lot of that can be said about the history, right? There, because... You see, if forget about the history, what about the, what about the way that actual nation state liberal secular democracies actually operate from yeah. a legislative point of view in the way the institutions work, in the way they put bills through? Do you believe that that system, forget about the history, forget about enlightened philosophers mm. and these guys, the system as we know it, which we live, breathe, and see every day, do you feel that there is an usul fundamental contradiction with that? And what's understood as Islamic system? Do you do you even think the system is so Islamic? That's a different question. To that's a very that could bring about a very radically different answer to the, the voting question, because when you're talking about a system, well, it kind of right? is relevant, someone. I'll tell you why. Because what the re one of the main reasons why brothers and sisters or, or, or some Muslims don't vote, mm -hmm. and they deem it to be haram. Is that they believe that the system in its asal and participating is is kufr? Or that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm kufr. saying. It makes sense. Yeah. But that's not how a fatwa is constructed. A fatwa no, is they've not obviously constructed. Adopted a fatwa, bro. Yeah, but the fatwa is not constructed based on how this system is so bad, and then so something the called participation. So you, so you don't think the system is un-Islamic? The system itself. If you're talking about a system, right? If you mean, as a, for go example, as a governing system, the way in which. Uh, the governing system manifests in the United Kingdom. Let's talk. Let's keep it specific. Yeah, there's many, many bad things about the system. But is it un-Islamic? Right? Of course, if there's many, many parts of it are un-Islamic. Yeah. Are in parts of it Islamic? Of course. If something is, that's the thing. That's the issue with our our dawah, right? Over the years, that we need to empower brothers and sisters to recognize that if something is just, that is Islamic, right? If something is. Uh, in line with what Allah has legislated and Allah has revealed, mm. that is Islamic. We shouldn't feel that, you know, this is something uh, dirty or un-Islamic, right? Okay. Now, there are many, maybe we can say out of all of the Islamic kind of values and principles, the system that we're currently living in implements maybe 40% of it. Mm. The problem is the way the, 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 the people of fiqh look at these things, they say, if you're able to increase that, then it's... It could be an obligation on you to do that. They're not going to say, oh, look how evil the theory behind the system is. But it's not the theory. You just said yeah. yourself there's aspects of the system which is horrible. Yeah, yeah. they're not going to say that. The, they're not going to say the theory and the underlying philosophy of the system is wrong. Therefore, you know, you can't try to improve it, mm. right? They might say, look, you can some because of the the the, the dhulm of the system, people are dying on NHS. Uh, sorry to be emotional. <laughs> mm. People are dying on NHS, you know, in in the waiting room or on on stretchers, mm. right? Are you saying that I require a specific? Nobody says that I require a specific Islamic text to try and reduce that nafsa that harm. Yeah, or people, or if it's suicide, or mental health issues, or NHS spending, or whatever. But you agree right? that are you saying that you might need to vote to change that to to, to, to whatever, to, whatever. Right, voting whatever. is just one. One thing, and if you, you can, can the in this, I mean, I would argue in this in this election, mm. you can influence that using your vote because it, for the first time in in at least our lifetimes, there's a radically different uh, set of uh, manifestos, Tika. radically different you know parties. You can Abdullah, choose from in terms of Abdullah. So, so you've heard some of the things which Salman has said. Uh, he deems it to be definitely permissible mm -hmm. and in some cases uh, obligatory. Mm. Um, he also said that. Um, the vast majority of the fiqh councils that he's aware of are not even debating whether it's haram or kufr, it's the other. And thirdly, that those hukums or those fatwas that we follow, or those that those Muslims, I said we, oh my days, <laughs> <laughs> impartially, is that the like, oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so those Muslims who follow those rulings, mm -hmm. They're kind of contextual to the Muslim world, specifically Egypt and Saudi. Yeah. Uh, and not just that. I'm not saying they can just specific to them, but not specific. But that's where the the uh, anti democracy the anti democracy okay. kind of further came from, and you can understand it in that context. Okay. In the, in, in the, in the, so, Abdullah, uh, your decades. response to some of these points uh, Salman's made, my dear brother. Sure. Well, with um, with due respect to my, my my dear brother, 
Um, Honourable gentlemen. Yes, yes. <laughs> order. Um, no, order. Um, I would say that uh, he perhaps has misconstrued uh, both the opinions that I follow and how, and I would say a bit about um, sort of fit on this on matters concerning these 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 affairs and how the op- op- say opposing side, quote unquote. Um, has come to its conclusion, uh, which I think is really non-controversial, at least for um, 1,300 years, when any Muslim scholar discussed the ideas and the deen and the laws of any other civilization. Okay? They've always understood Tarot and Skofar, and of course you can't support these uh, systems, even though there was, not, there, was, there was republics, there was monarchies, there was all kinds of things happening. I would say that sometimes a lot of people in arguments, and it's very common, I call it the um, defense of claimed uh, lack of nuance, right? Which is, oh, this side, you don't have nuance, so you need nuance. I'm all for nuance. I, you know, the devil's I'm in the detail. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, the pro- but here's a problem, which is in order to argue for nuance, you have to present... Um, any particular evidence from Islamic sources, from from, from the Asulness and, and various fiqh, uh, opinions and so on, which argue or give any basis behind which something which is ordinarily haram is now halal in a particular circumstance and situation. I think but from no, all no, my review of it... Answer, I'm not arguing that though. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, this, I know, this but, is but, a, this but, is but, but when you argued that I was being, um, or rather the opinion I follow comes from positions which are reductionist. Um, I, okay, a bit of a postmodern term there, but um, that, that just looks at conceptual ideas. I would say that it... Would, firstly, we have to argue why is reductionism wrong anyway in the first place. We get everyone to use that. You're reductionist, you're reductionist. Please tell me how reductionism um, is wrong in a, num- a number of cases. It's actually quite useful. I mean, you know, science is built up on reductionism. You know, you take the smallest elements, components, and we're all the, the sum of our parts, plus or minus uh, metaphysical concepts like a soul and things like that. Anyway, but actually, in the last fifty years, there's been a move away from that into more systems biology, systems engineering, and and the opposite is holism. But anyway, of course, I mean, but 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 there is, a, but there, no, um, holism is is perhaps just where they they start their um, kind of uh, thinking from. But ultimately, they all affirm that it arises from um, the a combination of parts working um, as as a whole. But these are all ultimately come from parts which are um, interacting with each other. But it's not like there's all these parts and then there's something extra plus these parts that is some, something going on here. They don't, they don't, no one will argue that otherwise they wouldn't be. They do. Actually. Materi- materialist anyway. Brother, okay, we digress. We, we, can, we, can, we can digress. Anyway, so, um, anyway, so there's no basis in um, or sort of fiqh or anything that I've seen from any of the sides arguing to participate in elections for the legislative branches of secular democracies. The only argument the they've question, ever, but, sorry to comment, yeah. because you're going wrong a route on trying to say that this is not even a question when it comes to the the what the fatwa councils and what the fuqaha talking about voting are talking about, because the issue of legislation and someone in parliament doing something bad, let's just say I, I agree with you that you're voting um, in an election and that, that it's a parliamentary election and everyone's going to do something bad in parliament the 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 the, the but that's not the basis for the problem the, 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 the fatwa is not about because the leader might do something bad so that's what i'm saying no they will um, definitely do me, something bad well i'll i'll, I'll let me de- let me sp- okay, spread so out my fine. my kind of thinking and then you can you're free, you're, you're, you can pick holes if you if you like um okay so firstly um so I'd say that the, the argument that one side has more nuance than the other, I would say, is is not. The I wouldn't case. say nuance. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to kind of. That's fine. I mean, um, le- like I don't like the word nuance okay, anyway. Okay, I mean the. <laughs> Hunter uh, loves it. I like old ones. Um, saying that, aside from principles, um, so there's one side you say that based on principles or abstract principles, and the other side deals with. Let's look at the specific case in, in in question, but the specific case must be judged. Based on reference to texts and principles, yeah, and so that's on, so the key. We are we are a religion yeah. of scripture and and uh, and words and letters. So there's that. Now the argument that well the West's understanding of what it means um, to to vote is from history. It's not from history. It's 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 the legal understanding is you vote, you form a contract with the leader to uh, or with the legislative to legislate on your behalf, your best interests according to interests which are established according to man's own perception of good and bad. This is the contract of ruling. It's it, every single, almost virtually every single political philosopher from the second liberal tradition 
as well as well, even the Marxist tradition would argue that a state must be um, legitimated based on this establishing contract of these people are legislating on your behalf because you can't all do it as not everything can be a referendum. It's only for practical reasons. You need these representatives to legislate the good and bad on your behalf and then establish what is good and bad for society as they determine. Abdullah, so how would that be that different one is a legal a case. How would that be different to giving a Khalifa a bay'ah to, to rule as well? The, the, in the caliphate system, the Khalifa is given, he's uh, a, a selected by the people um, based on to execute the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the laws of Allah need to be executed. We need to have a manager, basically. What CR say is to manage, right? So we need someone to manage this obli collective obligation that the Ummah have. And so the Ummah then decide who amongst us will represent our discharging this obligation of ruling by what Allah has revealed and establishing that system and validating all the law courts and things like that, as Imam Khazali discussed. The, uh, the Khalifa then legitimizes all the, the, the legal system underneath him. And why is that different to, to how, you've, how you've understood the democratic it's all, system? Well, it's all about basis. You see, just because there is a selection process doesn't mean it's the same thing that you're um, selecting about. So in the caliphate system, the selection process is we need to legislate according to Allah's hukum as a source of law, as the base of good and bad. So we need someone to, um, we need to select someone to basically do that job. Whereas in secular democracy, the people have the sovereign right of legislation according to its system, according to its, its worldview. And because they, because practically speaking, they can't all do that. They have to select representatives to do that on their behalf to discharge, not, not, not discharging any, any duty per se, but rather just to manifest their own sovereignty uh, in a system which will legislate according to the um, what it considers to be the good and bad of the people uh, on behalf of the people's own um, right to do so. So that's that. Now, I want to get back to two things. Whenever we look at any ahkam or ishtahad of a, situ of a reality, of a situation, right? So ishtahad... Reductions or not, it's basically you look at the texts. What is the reality? What are the text teaching and commanding? You look at the reality. What is the any particular reality, specific one or general one or what have you? And then you make this comparison. You try to derive a ruling. There's no, there's no third option. There's no third uh, first that's branch. That's done. That's my argument. Well, well, well okay. I mean, but I, well, as I said, um, I that, mean, it's that, not how done it. in in if you look at, for example, a school of thought, right? Well, okay, I, 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 that's I, not how. The, but there's no, but there's no, there's no ration, there's no other way it can there be is. done, and there was no other way it has been done in throughout history. Anyway, but okay, let me let me just finish my point. Anyway, okay. remind me to talk so, about that because I'm gonna forget the way. Okay, so there's text, okay. there's yeah, text, there's, there's, there's reality, there, there's text, and the reality of the situation. What you saying, now? What yeah. are you saying? What's 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 left out here? The point is, it's the other way around. Okay. Reality and I'll then give you an example. Okay. No, no, no. But Abdullah needs to finish. But I, quickly, what you saying is is left out from it. What's it, what's he uh, omitted? Uh, from by it? the way, I didn't say chronologically. I didn't say you start out with text and you could. Yeah, I just said I just with. said I didn't say chronologically one comes with the other. I just said there are these are two components. Okay, whoever whichever way you want to start from is it's whatever. It's fine as long as they are concordant. Your, your issue in, is the order. Yeah? My issue is it's not and this separation by the way of the Islamic and the reality of the text and reality. I have an issue with that as well. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, well. Okay, yeah, okay. We, can, we, we can get to that. Uh, okay, so then in consideration of reality, so the reality of the situation, let's say the reality of Western secular systems. So you want to talk about, we, there's, there's two ways we can look at it, which is what is the actual reality? So what is actually happening and going on? And what do the West themselves believe is going on? What meaning do they ascribe to their way of life, right? These two things we have to bear in mind before any Muslim scholar can pronounce any uh, judgment on the matter. So what is actually I would contend, happening? I would yeah. contend the second is irrelevant. Okay, well, no, no, you, did, you did make that clear, but I want to... I want to address why it actually is relevant. Okay. Okay. So the first one is looks like the actual reality. The actual reality is legislation on what is good and bad is being conducted by legislative um, individuals, and they can only do so because people um, form a contract with them by selecting them, and then they have the power and authority to do so, and it's accepted that they have legal authority because it has been assigned to them for that specific purpose by the people. That's what's actually would you, happening. Would you accept if you, instead of saying good and bad, you said legal and illegal? Why are they different? It's a very secular understanding to say that legal and legal and good and bad are separate things. See, we've actually introduced that as a modern legal Western... Mean, le I agree. I agree. So the separation of morality from law is an artificial kind of 
um, separation. In, I mean, we have from the, the similar, the secular kind of what? Right. Well, but, well, no, actually, there's. Uh, the, the, I mean, a Christian the, minority is is legally allowed Islamically to commit shirk, but it doesn't make it doesn't mean they're not held accountable to for that decision in the hereafter. I.e., it's something bad. Well, actually. You, what we'd argue is, or well, the best way of actually looking at it is, it's actually it's not it's not legal for them to commit shirk in an Islamic government. It's rather the state doesn't have the power to get involved and stop them, and that's a difference because they can't say a Christian can't say their judgment. But Allah you gave me a right to do this. He didn't give you a right to do it. He gave you a respite to do yeah. it. There's a difference between the two, right? So an Islamic government. Doesn't recognize it been illegal. Are you saying it wasn't it, it, it um, no, was illegal or no? No. If we um, accept it's this legal, uh, illegal. According binary. to the the according to the, the Sharia of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it is illegal. But the state it is not legal for the an Islamic state to impose that legal requirement on um, by physical enforcement mm -hmm. on Christians. Yeah, That's actually that. what's happening. So they don't have a, they don't, you, so, so in a way, um, for, if you want to use the practical, kind of the common parlance, you could say it's like a right, but technically speaking, it's not a right. It's a wrong. Allah does not give a right for people to commit shirk. That's why, otherwise he, then he, why would he punish them? Well, anyway. If so, you agree, why did you pull up, why did you throw that in? Because you, I'm you, saying that no, he's using good, good and now, bad. Now it, now it clarifies yeah. now. So, um, well, because, because in the Muslim world, what happens is this, right? They say, Oh, the ruler isn't changing the Sharia. He's not changing it. He's just saying he's just saying good and bad, and that he's going to make a, a law that he's saying this is the law. But he's not saying he's not changing the hukum of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So he's not committing, he's not committing kufr or doing bad or saying what have you. And I say no, no. But many he, you'd agree to say many. to say to say to say something is is legal or illegal is mm. basically saying haram halal. It's no, us who under it's punishment us who, of coercion from the law. Right? Yeah. No. No. Something is illegal. Misunderstood, misunderstood. The haram and halal is not mm. haram and halal spiritual, haram and halal legal. There's just haram and halal from the Muslim perspective is holistic. We don't mm. say secular halal, halal haram, spiritual halal haram. There's just a halal and haram and there's aspects that, so for example, it's haram for someone to take drugs. But if they do it in the privacy of their own home, it is haram for someone else who hears about this to physically intervene. And like stop that person from from doing it. But if he takes it outside, if this guy who's taking drugs is now pushing it onto onto kids outside or what have you, it becomes an obligation for society collectively to have a mechanism yeah. to stop that person from doing it. And does it mean now that because the person can do it in his own home without it being obliged on anybody else, and in fact it's being prohibited from him to intervene, does it mean it's halal? No, it's not. So it's a little nuance there now to use that word, right? <laughs> but 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 like it, but Islam is <laughs> Islam is very consistent. It doesn't say you have a right to to have drugs in your house. You don't have a right, but no one has the right to enter and breach your privacy. Mm. You see, and that's how it is. Yeah, explained. but what happens if somebody does enter and breach the privacy? Well, then they're the ones who basically have have they, so well, other people the, the, have then, to get then the state then the state will punish the individual who breached the so privacy. How, how, how would if you is argue if someone just said that's just a semantic difference? Then no, is because illegal because the state now it yeah. discusses what what laws to pass. So this is illegal. This is legal. Yeah. Something might be perfectly legal, but it's bad. Okay, so and it's in unethical. It's like a tax avoidance or something. Uh, well, I suppose to, to explain yeah. it, it's like this. Um, so many Islamophobes uh, would say, I'm going to use this term Islamophobe, um, anti-Muslim, anti-Islam, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. So they say Islam is a totalitarian system. It has a government. It'll be totalitarian. Why? Because they say that the uh, Islamic law covers every aspect from personal to public. And so if the state is implementing this law, it will be totalitarian in every aspect of it. There's no privacy at all. Which is wrong. Which is, no, yeah, it's, and, 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 true. Yeah, yeah. It's and, true. and the reason is because they have maybe willfully uh, misunderstood what Islamic, the, the, what Islamic law is and, this me and the state system, what it does. That, Islamic that, law that, is that's, holistic. That's, the, that's because of the, the state part, not the Islamic part. That's what a modern state does. It has the, the, the understanding of a state today and systems that people like to say it's a legally monistic, enforced. Yeah, uh, rule, everything that's a law, law must every, be enforced everyone. by the government in, in, in all situations. Whereas in Islam, um, the Islamic law covers every aspect of your, your private life, your public life, 
No, that's, that's, that's agreed. But the state doesn't have, is not obliged to, and does not have um, the right to, in, in terms of in terms of its um, spying, power and so forth. to intervene, to in, enforce every aspect of Islamic law related to, especially related to um, private um, uh, hukums and, and laws upon the Muslim uh, individual, mm -hmm. right? But the law is co you know, comprehensive. The halal and no, haram is, is if comprehensive. Somebody says, for example, to that state or that society that is not intervening when a, a a an illegal haram law is being broken you don't say to that person you're not implementing or you're not islamic anymore or whatever no what when it comes to implementing something and in one place and not implementing something in another place that's the that's the the area of the mufti the in the mujtahid to say this is now applies in this area and it does not apply in that area right um you can but i think, you agree I, think with that? No, I think the water's been muddied here because i said the, the the clear concept is that there's no separate space for two different halal and harams or a permissible impermissible legal or illegal right in islam they're all the same if you say something is legal you're saying it's halal if you're saying it's illegal you're saying it's haram we don't have a separation say no no he's only referring to but policies in the in the state of saudi arabia it's, it's, We're not, a, referring, it's not, a, not trying it's to change, change though, isn't it? i'm not so because uh, i mean the classical uh, uh, because if you say, if like you say Mawawi, it's no. it's uh, illegal but it's not that the law has no right to take you to task for it then what you're saying is it's no no you're not saying the law you're saying that the state mechanism as a group has not been given license by that exact same law yeah. to enforce that other aspect of law <clears throat> remind me again how this conversation is relevant to okay okay so we, we got lost in the uh, so you know that you're dangerous you know that um, so anyway look I tell you, um, let me just lay out my, my, my okay, case very yeah. quickly now and then we can then discuss it right so there's what actually is happening in the west is people are uh, relying on voting to give them legitimacy uh, to legislate according to other basis, according to what man views as beneficial or the, and, and, and specifically the citizens of that country rather than um, the Quran. Whereas in the in Islamic system, the people elect a executive individual. So he just executes the, the law and conducts ishtahad according to his best understanding of what he feels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't, isn't present and speaking to us um, directly where we can hear him in our, in our ears. So we need to now go through him via the text. Right? And of course, we have to implement it the best of our best of our ability, which is why then the individual, the caliph is, the caliph is legislating and, and legislating isn't the problem. It's what you're legislating by. Right? Whereas in, democ in second democracy, you're legislating by um, the human interest of all human considerations of um, good and bad limited to just what is the dunya. Right, that's the difference. So, so it's the source, i.e., one is Tahut in a source, and the other one is um, it, the, from the creator of the, the universe. Now, that's, that's point one. So, what's actually happened is the case. That's what is the, is the case. Now, I'd like to see any argument in any situation, short of someone putting a gun to your head and saying, vote or die, that uh, like, if you don't vote in this second system, we're going we're gonna to kill you. Um, short of that situation, I don't see any evidence that's ever been brought to my knowledge that says, the usual prohibition about what is in essence uh, a, a kind of shirk in a way um, is now is now uh, it's now permissible to, to now vote in that situation. What about right? imprisonment or a hefty fine? Imprisonment or hefty fine. I mean, you know what? As I said, this, um, this is irrelevant. If, if the state threatens you, this if, point, yeah, yeah, yeah. If the state the state threatens you with imprisonment or hefty fine, um, all I can say is that uh, we've probably gone outside the realms of my knowledge uh, okay. and would have to defer to a scholar uh, okay. to discuss. These other aspects of, yes, um, of, 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 of punishment. <laughs> um, the second point, the second uh, main of let's say, crux of the argument is what the West considers is happening when it does the vote. Okay. Now you might think, well, we don't care about what the West considers. It's what you know. It's just what we consider as Muslims. What is actually what we think is, is happening. But no, because as Muslims, we're commanded to be witnesses to the truth to mankind and, and witnesses to justice to mankind. Right? We have to bear witness. It doesn't matter that the action itself might be looks like innocuous to a materialist. So, for example, if a let's say Richard Dawkins comes in and he sees um, someone bowing down to an idol, right? He he doesn't have a problem with bowing down or bowing down to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? He doesn't have a problem with that because, generally speaking, apart from he says it maybe it's a fiction, you're just you know fooling yourself. 
but he won't say it should be prohibited because, well, bowing down is a harmless action. You're just bowing down. It's not it's just a simple action. Just you, you bow down all the time. You lose a contact lens. You go on the floor, maybe, you know, you bow down. It's just, a, it's a harmless action, but it's not because of the meaning behind it, the understanding of the meaning behind it, right? So, so if somebody yeah. is actually, has actually lost a lens, you would still hold them to account for that? No, wasn't I just showing that I wouldn't because the meaning behind bowing down so, to find so your contact one lens. one person's means, what one person's intent is, is, uh, is different to another person's intent. So that it, suffices to... But it's an actions, or actions by intent, of course. Exactly. Yeah. So it suffices... Wait, 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 one the, second. Let me, let me finish my point. Let me, so um, the, the actions are by what it is... Uh, actions by what is considered to be the, the intent, um, uh, the meaning ascribed to that action. Okay. So in the wider situation, the wider populace, if they basically understand that, you know, voting is the, is the mark oh, No, you of, didn't say that before. What? You didn't say the meaning ascribed to that. You said the intention of the person doing it. Right? Yeah, but but here's the thing, right? It is let's say you have a let's say you have an average common you know variety common garden variety uh, monarchic or what have you, right? So it's just a hypocrite, a hypocrite meaning someone who just imitates whatever society he's in. He doesn't really believe in the principles of society. Mm -hmm. And the monarchic um, is a, let's say he's born into a Hindu society, and they and they say to get wealth and not get to, to get respect in our society, you have to bow down to Ganesha. He doesn't really believe in Ganesha exactly. He just says, okay, I'll just do that. I'll just do that because it gets me what I want. You can't say, oh, well, he's not committing. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not committing shirk. Well, well uh, he's not committing shirk because he only did it for self-interest. Yeah. So no, because the action itself is understood to be shirk. So even whatever he was doing it um, for, what if he lost a it, is, it, is, it is incorrect. Because oh, what's the message the of a contact Because he mentioned it as an example. I'm oh. saying if you just fall over, yeah. because somebody might describe that as, you know, shirk as bowing out of ibadah. But if you're not if you're not bowing to anything, you're literally just picking up a content and you're not yeah. actually bowing to anything. Or for exercise, stretching your back. No, no, okay, so to maybe prevent you from getting confused, I'll say the action which the action the action which should be <laughs> no no I'm just saying because because it's, because the contact lens will come back is the the prohibited action is bowing to something other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right. Yeah. When you're picking up a contact lens, you're not bowing to something. Yeah, so it's a you're just picking argument. up. You're, you're picking up um, a contact lens. Just because it shares the the quality of bowing is, is different from bowing to and just bowing for the sake of bowing to pick up something on the floor. So let's not get well, just okay. a little bit confused. To conclude your point, and we're going to get to you soon, Salman. Stop interrupting. <laughs> Stop it. Um, anyway, so so here's the thing. Um, it, during in the Roman Empire, uh, it, it demanded all its citizens to burn a pinch of incense to the emperor as the son of Jupiter, okay, as respect. Uh, Christians were persecuted uh, a lot because they viewed it as shirk. Because they said, look, we can we can abide by the laws of the emperor and we can obey the emperor and we can like be loyal as in not we're not going to you know ally with foreign governments against the emperor, but we can't burn incense for the emperor when the meaning of burning incense of this particular action is um, acknowledging the emperor as the son of Jupiter. We can't acknowledge that because we don't believe in Jupiter. You're, so this meaning that you're ascribing to this prevents us. Burning incense is just burning incense. That nice little smell and fragrance is produced. What's wrong with burning incense? Yeah. But they couldn't do it because they understood. Uh, and I wish Muslims had the same. In other words, yeah. you're looking at the context and what is going to be understood from that. Exactly. So the you're fact on, why you're it's on, about you're on, the you're on <laughs> So how is that analogy, so, how is that analogy relevant, Abdullah, to voting in secular democ democratic elections? Then? Okay, so um, voting for legislative bodies in secular democratic elections is understood both in actual there's, there's what it actually is, which is again um, would, would be contravening Islamic law, and then what is what is believed to mean that it represents you uh, manifesting your sovereign your sovereignty over yourself mm. as your own possession. Mm. That's the belief that's att attached to it. Um, so then do, therefore participating in that will be understood that you um, acknowledge and ascribe that thing. Now I want to give a little analogy and then I'll kind of like stop talking for a bit. All right. Um, okay. So let's give an analogy, right? So let's say in pagan Arabia, different tribes had different idols. Okay. Um, they were. They didn't. Uh, idolatry in this Arabia, Arabia wasn't like one uniform particular religion, but they generally share the idea of idols. Right. So each tribe might have its own patron idol. You know, like um, Athens had Athena for its as, as a patron um, idol for its state. So let's say each tribe has its own idol, and they could bring the idol and put the statue in the Kaaba, and that be recognized as a form of of um, nobility and respect for that tribe. Anyway, like a being recognized by the United Nations. Mm. Okay. Anyway. 
So let's say let's say there were let's say there was some there's one tribe of of, of pagans. Um, they let's say worshipped uh, I don't know Alat, okay, um, the alleged daughter of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which is obviously she was. It was just a fake oh, idol. Yeah. yeah. Now let's say Alat was let's say viewed as the goddess of fertility and kindness and love. Let's just say maybe like they ripped up Aphrodite or something. Yeah. Mm. And um, the, the, the tribe was becoming a bit more warlike and it wanted to, to assert itself. And it said, you know what, maybe we, we need to have Hubal as our, as our um, head idol to, that we all worship. Okay? So maybe if some of those sort of people in the tribe were Muslim, became Muslim. They took the shahad and became Muslim. And then this tribe said, we're going to have a big shura session. Everyone gets a say and we all count up the heads. Which idol shall we make the head idol of our tribe? And to which um, to which this tribe um, oh, owes its worship to? Okay. Let me finish his analogy. Um, gonna... The one that is associated with love and kindness, which uh, is is good, be, uh, um, is is will make will be, will be will represent our spirit, or one that's a bit more warlike and tough, like Hubal, represents our spirit. So the Muslims start discussing amongst themselves, and so one Muslim said, "Well, pff, you can't vote for one between one of the two idols. It's both shirk." And then a second Muslim comes along and says, "Brother." We have to look at the context. <laughs> you see, you see, if under Alat, they will tolerate Muslims. They will be, they won't be as warlike, right? They'll actually be more tolerant towards Muslims. But if you get Hubal, then you know we're going to start being persecuted in the Byram tribe. So look, you know, uh, for Maslaha, let's elect Hubal for <laughs> or Hubal for God. Even he can't keep a straight face. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but well, but that's the thing. When you put it in that way, it becomes crystal clear. Of course, it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That's okay. the problem. Uh, Abdullah, is that the end of your analogy? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, my, my my point is this: um, as Muslims, we're here to bear witness. Uh, yeah. First and foremost, um, the the story of the people, the Sabbath breakers. There was, you know, there was a, a Jewish town, and there was one group of that of them who broke the Sabbath. And there was another group of them who condemned the Sabbath breakers. And there was a third group who just remained silent. Okay. And in the Quran's beautiful um, verse, it, it mentions the reasons why those who were condemning the Sabbath, the ones who condemned the Sabbath breakers, who spoke out, who braved the fitna, the trouble that might cause to them. They said it, it wasn't because their, their prime reason wasn't to actually change their minds. Their prime reason was, oh, we just don't want to be associated with others' punishment to you. That's, that's it. Maybe, and maybe, Maybe you would change your mind, mm. right? But the first reason is bearing witness. So that, so that would be, um, I think, my comprehensive statement okay. of the argument. Mad that that exact same analogy <laughs> was used during the London mayoral elections against those who didn't vote. Mad, That's it? the point, oh, really. When people yeah, yeah. argue, so one over to you. No, there's no. And Abdul, change, Abdul is allowed to interject because he did it about of course, eight times. Of course. I don't know what to talk about now because there's so many random things. Do you remember what I said? Yeah. So, so you wanted to make a point about the fit. And that, that's not how the fic, that, the way Abdullah described it. So, so even though... Yeah, Abdullah, I, I remember now. Hold on, hold on. But Abdullah yeah. did mention that. He didn't mention any specific chronology. He just said text and reality, no specific order. You mm -hmm. said you had an issue with the order. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, second, a second uh, is about um, the perhaps the analogy of Allah and Hubal. You can probably address that. But this is your last piece before we actually move on to how mm. your both respective positions influence the latter discussions we're going to have for them. So the point is, it's very easy to build an argument that makes sense, right? Using the the the, the correct nusus and not using the ones that don't apply to the argument, right? The reason, I mean, imagine why would a faqih, okay? Why would they fit council? Why would so many different scholars from all over the world, right, uh, enter elections and, and, and give fatwas about this if they didn't know the basic ABCs of Tawheed? Surely that should raise some alarm bells that, wait a second, maybe there's something different to our approach, how we take in the West, and the approach of mainstream fiqh, right? Because the, let me let me let me just mention one example, okay? It's not the when you're looking authority, at, sorry. It is, yeah. and that's okay. important for us, okay. right? Because... Uh, an appeal to authority is only fallacious if the authority has no, you know, sway. It's just a, 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 an illegitimate authority, right? But these are the very there people. Are contrary authorities. If these these are the very people, right? International fit councils and nadawat of ulama and so forth. These are the very people that we would put in place had we presumably, you know, um, uh, uh, established a khilafah and on all this kind of good but you're stuff. You're good because you believe democracy right? is khilafah. Yeah, but the point is, even you, anyone, right? 
they would look to these same people to be the mujtahids of the ummah and to, to, to you know, fill the positions and, and judges and so forth. So there has to be some degree of um, giving benefit of the doubt that they're not talking about something as simple as making shirk with one person or making shirk with another person, right? And the way the reason why this is the case is when you look at Abdullah, how do you believe do you, do you believe this issue is a matter of legitimate ikhtilaf or not? Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be nuanced about it and um, but we, uh, okay. we, we will have to hand over to radical. someone very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that it's not a matter of uh, I, I wouldn't say that from what the scholars have discussed about this classical, um, maybe not particularly second democracy, but um, classical like uh, Ibn Timiyah on the, 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 the ruling of the Mongols and as well as um, some of the scholars today who might, would also be candidates for being legislative um, uh, branch of, of a caliphate. Um, Can you give an example? So, so well, okay. Well, 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 we, we both haven't given examples just yet. So we, we'll just give a few names. We'll, we'll just discuss. Well, and there's there's a list of names on the on the website. Well, that's what I'm just okay. With. That's All right. The thing. Um, my but my point is that I would say that from that basis, it's not a matter of legitimate difference of opinion. However, concessions must be made. Concessions must be made for um, people's the understanding of the Muslim Ummah today. So I wouldn't say that the Muslim Ummah, um, or the, the vast majority of people, I think, who, let's say, participate in, in elections, uh, would, would ever qualify as leaving Islam at all. Because in our current day and age, Muslim, the Muslims lack understanding of political philosophy, Islamic political philosophy. And so they wouldn't understand it in that manner. So you're giving benefit on the doubt on the basis of lack of knowledge of the actual system and the issue at hand? Yeah, well, in Islam, no one can be condemned if they, um, if they, they lack knowledge. Or there, or there is a genuine misunderstanding or confusion or what have you, you have to give benefit of the doubt. Okay, okay. So, so the, my argument is, my contention is that this is not the way fiqh for the vast majority of our history has been practiced. Fiqh looks at a situation a person is in and that the, 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 what, I was about to, what I was about to say like 20 minutes ago was the, the slave is never subject to just one consideration at a time. Using this methodology where you develop a cogent argument against, for example, um, democracy as it's been advertised by by um, kind of Western um, uh, philosophers and so forth. Um, again, some, that's something, by the way, which I disagree with in terms of how much, how seriously we should take cheerleaders for democracy in, 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 the, in the imperialist... Con, uh, imperial, in but they the were the founding fathers, bro. That's the thing. I disagree with that. Absolutely, this is a this is a propaganda of, of to 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 uh, construct a, a Europe an identity of Europeanness to in 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 contradistinction to Islam. But that's different. So if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that. What I'm talking about is the fiqh here. Yeah? Um, we don't just develop a an argument and then out pops the the fatwa at the end. No, we look at the the situation and might see, for example, this person. He has five different nusuls that are applying to him or her at one point in time, mm. right? And it's the job of the mufti and the faqih to um, to combine them all together. And there's a very defined calculus about this, right? It's not as simple as just, um, you know, with all respect, making an argument and that kind of uh, feels strong and then uh, executing that. with the It's not me making the argument. I'm only defending... The hikmah of what I see is the stronger opinion. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Um, is that's or, or not strong, an opinion. The stronger that's not argument fatwa. by um, by what you're doing is you're taking a, especially with classical. Of course, it's clear you're taking the theory that they're talking about and you're implementing it on a specific. No, but the, no, no, but uh, someone, some, someone, I, I, I need to ask you two questions, bro. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I think it will actually help clarify perhaps where you both stand on this issue, uh, and that's understanding. Democracy as a ruling system, or Let's as a going system. to in a minute. No, no, no but it's talk important. About the, in its asal, in its asal, bro. That's the thing. It has no asal when you're talking you about that? something like this. Come on, right? bro. So I'll look. I'll answer that in a second. The point is, the fiqh doesn't look at things like this. I'm saying, well, I'm but fiqh would have to. Right? No, but fiq would have to because because no, one the that's, conditions. That's what's surprising. No, no, but listen, fiq, fiq, fiq would have to do that, bro, because it have to understand the reality. Of, of a particular given situation. Yeah, the comprehensive reality. Are you, are you saying that, that um, Fiqh purposely wishes to be ignorant on some on many matters? How can you, no, absolutely not. But what I'm saying is a Mufti, a Faqih, he looks at the different things that are available to the person at that time. Okay. Right? Um, and it's not, it doesn't go that way. So let me, it might be too theoretical. Let me, let me try and give an example, right? 
uh, <coughs> uh, a mufti will see, for example, someone might say, you know, um, is my wudu valid if I, um, you know, uh, didn't uh, miss my elbow or something, yeah. or something like that. A, a wise mufti, they discuss it, he shouldn't just blurt out an answer to that, even though theoretically it has an answer. You have to look at what the person, who the person is coming to you. It might be that that person is suffering from wiswas, and you telling him the technically correct answer is going to ruin his life, right? Increase his his wiswas, right? Um, likewise, when it comes to introducing Islam to someone, like for example, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, yeah, fame, uh, it's well known his opinion. His mother was after Asr, you know, when you come to a masjid, you pray to you don't pray to hit al masjid. Right, because of the prohibition. Yeah. Right, um, he comes in, he sits down with his companions. A boy comes up to him, and he says, "What are you doing? Don't you know you're supposed to pray two rak'ah?" So he gets up and prays. And so his companions are like, "What happened? Did you change your opinion?" Because what we know from you is that it's, you know before maghrib is prohibited. He said, "Yes, that's still my opinion." But when he said this to me, I didn't want to be uh, referred to as those women. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ida wa ida yarka'un." When he said to them, bow, they don't bow. Mm. So the point is, at that point in time, he had a different consideration to act upon then. Okay. Now, if somebody's building up an, a, a momentous a momentum in an argument going from his, his madhab, they're going to ignore the, the difference between the theory and the actual practice. The practice is, that's how... Islamic fiqh looks at things, okay, in that particular time. That's why a fatwa is not transferable. What Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says about the Mongols is not the same as what he says about another people or, or in another scholar might be saying about another people. Five time. views in right. listeners, Salman, five views in listeners, bro. Um, you know, explain to us then the Usuli principles on, on, on what basis. Because Abdullah's base, Abdullah's explained his basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his basis, from my side, and forgive me for shortening or simplifying it, bro. Feel free to. Is that legislating, law making, and giving that authority or that sovereignty to someone to do that on your behalf and to do so for other than the Quran, the Sunnah, what Allah has really is harmed. That's yeah. his basis for his. Am I correct? That's the best I follow. Okay, and I'm so what so I'm explain, saying is so explain, that would be relevant. So explain your one. Yeah, that would so be explain, relevant. Yeah. If we were in an election where on one hand is that and on another hand is something else. Bro, right? but that's not that's what I'm saying. So okay. if if you're in an Islamic country where some secularists are coming in and uh, um, suggesting that to you, that's when all of this stuff that you mentioned it applies. But but, the, but, 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 but the situation the situation is arguably worse here because you've got Two or three or four, all the parties. Yeah. So I mean, what I'm saying, saying is, it could be actually all the way around. I would say that that the it would mean that the problem would be voting here, but in the Muslim world, it'd be more permissible, right? It'd be more permissible in the Muslim world because more the Muslim world they just think um, democracy is just pick your leader, right? And if a leader, if a people come, if some party comes and says, "Look, guys, you vote for us, we will change the constitution to a one uh, that uh, is based upon we'll the, 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 we'll the, 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 the Islamic law. laws, yeah. and we'll just be an executive yeah, branch." So, 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 I think it's more permissible, more understandable to vote no. because remember, the West is yeah. the source. The Muslim world are just taking a cheap copy of okay. uh, what they so, think so, so, democracy so, is. What I'm saying is the, the the fatwa in that country would be voting for that would be haram, maybe even kufr. Yeah. Right. But and voting for the Muslim Muslims yeah. to keep the as much Sharia as possible there, that would be obligatory. You see the, what I'm the, saying? In the West, voting for parties yeah, that so, all represent. Yeah. So um, the point is, is the point is the point is that, that's what that's my, that, that, my point. That's now. the whole point. That's uh, the the of the usul the the qawaid al umur bi ma'alati had the 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 matters determined by its con potential consequences. Right. If you vote for this. Oh yeah, if you so, what that, are the so, 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 so what are the consequences? So the Sharia looks at so, the difference yeah. between the 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 possible outcomes. Okay, so it doesn't look theoretically. What are you doing? And theoretically, according to this philosopher, that philosopher, what does that represent in in their worldview? No, I, it I looks at no, no, it looks, defense, it, what he's saying he's is in me. your in your worldview. Hmm. What do you? How much? How much uh, uh, credit do you give to Hobbes and John Stuart Mill and all those people? Fair enough, they might be that much. But how much credit do you give to other things, right? So, for example, an English law judge, if he's looking at a case of, of a Muslim with a with a with a nikah contract, 
he's he's got an Islamic marriage. Mm. That person's not going to say, "Oh, look at all of these. Look at what this uh, this Islamic philosopher said about the importance of marriage." Or imagine if it's something completely anathema to you know I- I English. English kind of uh, law principles and so forth. They're saying maybe, maybe imagine if it's you know, um, uh, Islamic marriage or nikah is you know a, 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 a very oppressive contract in the Islamic worldview. He's not going to care. He's looking at it from his point of view. He's going to say thanks. That part is relevant because it's relevant to my paradigm. And that part you can keep to yourself. Likewise, when a mufti is giving a fatwa, when these fiqh councils are giving fatwa about voting in a particular time and place, they're going to say. Some of that stuff that you're mentioning is relevant, and some of the stuff, Maasalam, we don't need it. But it's not the case that they're just ignorant; they don't know about this this history. But I have a question though, which is okay. So we look. So we said that the um, uh, <coughs> scholars and faqirs and others will look at consequences, uh, and in fiqh there is remit to look at consequences. Yes, for the fatwa. But but um, I would say that from all the understanding I've seen from consequences, it's if you have, you have a, a multiple, let's say, mubah options, and you say, okay, then what this consequence of this mubah option or this um, particular issue um, is worse than this situation? Okay, we'll pick the consequence or within these this variety of mubah um, po- act, possible activities that we do. We'll pick the one that produces the best consequence. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also within mu- within the mubah. But no one will ever say, and uh, no um, no ishtihad or, or uh, sorry, or no or sort of fiqh that I'm aware of from, from classical sort of fiqh has ever said that because um, as a consequence might make things easy or produce ease uh, for Muslims, it can make in itself the haram into the halal. When there is no when, nail on when, the head, when, when, when no exception has been when, when no exception has been given. So so but nobody's um, arguing that. Well, 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 you are because you, let me put my stall out. Okay, okay. okay. What you're saying is, remember, you mentioned about let's say like the NHS, right? You said um, good. We're going into manifesto in part. So I want the point. Is, no, 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 <laughs> the good. point is, he's, going he's, he's given an example of where the two worldviews clash. Because we've sp- we've the, spent the, an the, hour. But, if no, 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 listen to me. I see what it is. Yeah. Obviously, you guys both know exactly what I intended to discuss. We've mm. spent over an hour on the permissibility and privacy. Naturally, I knew this was. I didn't know it was going to take an hour. Just. Kind of on a concluding point, Salman. So, so, because then we need I to. I can't conclude because you mentioned a lot of things. Okay, have to Okay, hey, but the point right. is that I'm going to have to then apply both those positions to real life stuff like manifestos, policies, Brexit, where, fine, we've taken your theoretical arguments. How are we going to apply it on a reality? So, go on. Yeah, so, yeah, Abdullah hit the nail on the head when, and showed the difference between the two competing world, worldviews I'm talking about when it comes to fiqh. So the fuqaha, they wouldn't say this is this option is halal and this option is haram and take the haram one. They need to know that characterize the different options before they even say make a ruling of halal and haram. But if you go by coming up with a conclusion first and then saying it, this is a circular argument. You're saying one of the options is haram or it's already a bunch of haram options. I'm saying no. That is only determined after recognizing, looking at the reality, looking at the the, the options. Okay, um, that's, so, that's actually not what I'm saying. I'm saying that an option which is under um, normal circumstances is haram. You now have to. It's not. Really, that's what I'm saying. Okay, it's well, not haram know, under normal circumstances. And, and, and well, that's the thing. Like p- picking a, a, a leader to have um, authority, giving them the authority yeah, to legislate. It's not about, about characterized what revealed, like that by the Sharia. You mentioned well, that many yeah. times. Yeah, but the I, I mean, I would say I would contend the Sharia doesn't care. The Sharia doesn't care what that person or what the kuffar in doing that action think of themselves. The Sharia is looking at you as a mukallaf, you as a morally accountable person. Are you able to uh, reduce harm, or are you able to uh, increase benefit anywhere? The okay, Sharia okay. anywhere. What what in a particular firstly, con- what is concept? what is good? What is um, harm and benefit? That's that's the that's the fun. No one ever really answers that question. They do answer that. So this is well but, known. Okay, okay. The but, 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 but see, see, we'll get we'll get to the harm and benefit of okay. the manifesto here, pages. Here's my point. Hopefully, right? so so Hopefully. the, the, the Rasulullah was asked because he knew who all the munafiqeen were in Medina. And he asked, why don't you, if you know who these people are, these people committing sedition and don't really believe in Islam and are, are, are working against it in, insidiously, uh, why don't you just basically, um, you know, uh, prosecute them? Right? Why don't you just go after them? Or expel them. And he said, because um, the, the, the the pagans would just say that, oh, look, he's killing his own companions. If it's Prophet Muhammad and his, little, and his state, they're just killing, um, he, he, he just kills his companions willy-nilly. Because even though he has wahi and he knows who these people are, 
um, it's not immediate avail- it's not the, there's no dhahir, there's no there's no apparentness to anybody else and so it would look like to non-muslims that he was committing a fahisha and you can't and obviously we have to we have to care about what um our, our image because we're meant to be bearing witnesses to mankind, right? That's the point. Okay, but, but even, even though, consequences. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, okay, well, yeah, consequences. There's many things, but that, within Islamic law, within Islamic law, that's it's a circular not, argument. You're saying no. you're presuming within Islamic law it's haram to vote in the first place, and then you're saying you can't vote because it's haram and unless no, don't say you're saying voting. No, no, I so said Simon, it is different. You didn't say voting. I didn't say it's the issue of leg- leg- giving put, put, but you're putting, putting an X vote, on a box to, to pick you're saying your local. voting for your MP. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, saying voting for your MP. I'm saying it, any method that by which you said, yeah. uh, you uh, authorize a legislator to yeah. legislate on your behalf yeah. from a basis other than Allah, what Allah Subhanahu has revealed. This, the opinion that I follow, but the, the scholars have said that this is forbidden. Yeah, the scholars have said that. <coughs> but what <coughs> you're doing here is you're taking that theory and then implementing it in a particular time, place with a particular particular set of uh, of of conditions. And that is no, fatwa. No. Okay, okay, look. Uh, See, the, the, with a ruling, a, a wise, right? A if we say a ruling, if we say a ruling, if we say a ruling, right, has this a ruling, okay? Let's say to go and legislate something haram is haram. Okay? Now, the person who, that, that, it, 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 it's irresistible for us to think about areas where that might apply. But the faqih is looking at uh, so many different attachments, so they call it manat, okay, they call it, so manat of looking at the reality and seeing what parts, you know, of that But don't you, haven't, you haven't brought any manat, you haven't brought any argument to suggest that what has, what is normally considered to be prohibited it's as an not, idea Because, because it's, look, that's look, the look, point, look, it's look, not normally voting, prohibited vote, Look, if I said that, so, so if these scholars are saying um, as well as, I mean, the clear text anyway, referring <laughs> refer, referring to tahut of in derogation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's a sole right to be the source of legislation, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, doing so to make another source, to take Tahud, other than, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so, so you've taken Tahud, you you're taking the source of legislation, argument. let me finish, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is, um, is basically uh, you know, a forbidden thing. Now you have to show, you have to demonstrate that voting in these secular democracies is not that case. Because, as a wise man once said, if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if its DNA is ma- is measured and it and it's basically duck DNA of the of the of, of the variety of, of the of the variety like um, of, of the variety of the English canard, then it's a duck, right? And so, so so saying, oh, but look, this was talking about ducks, but these little cracky things that you see in the in the park. That's I'm oh, saying. Know, it might you're, seem you're now, now to in you. You're now but a fakir, yeah. a fakir, yeah. You said yourself that you're not a fatwa and so forth. And no, but he's adopted a position. Yeah, but, but the position. I'm saying, yeah. My contention is, I looked at the, the the scholars you quoted. Those very same scholars are saying. Some of them are saying it's it's it's. Uh, what well, all, 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 all eighty seven? I didn't have time to go through all of them. Qualified by saying. Oh well, actually, some of them say not all of them. Yeah, but was. I don't. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to go through. I don't. I have, I have to look at okay, the photo. The, the point is, listen. Do you know, do you know, I want to tell you something. What is fascinating is that opinion on on this is shared within all the schools of thought in Islam, um, Sunni, Shia, and what have you. If right? only um, you followed Muhammad. a school of thought on this mesh in the methodology of the fatwa, I would be with you, right? But what I'm saying is, you're this taking is, the this theory is not matter from the specific books. to any particular it school is, of thought. It's though. very no. The theory it's in the books, agreed. all four schools of thought, people from the 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 the, the, the people who are actually in uh, charge with giving the fatwa in our day, you find all four schools of thought saying. I mean, it's not even a question. In for example. In the subcontinent, you know, that you have Islamic party, entire parties full of ulama. The point is taking a a, a text or clear text or a fatwa or a, 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 the statement of a scholar from a, a one time in one place and implementing it in in uh, where you might think it's clear cut. But Salman, those ulama, those that's not necessarily. Salman, no, 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 Again, but, Abdullah, opinion, Abdullah, yeah. Abdullah, sorry, Salman. I think what needs to be made clear. Me and you have had this discussion before, not in detail. Those who follow that participating in secular democ- democratic elections, it being haram, um, from my understanding, bro, from the ulama who have issued fatawa on this issue, they don't make it time or region specific. They say that in its asal, that is haram. even more clear yeah. than what they're talking about okay. is not these okay. elections. Okay. How? What they're talking about is right. somebody, not legislators. No, is somebody no, for example, going into a parliament and doing something. No, evil. you made that. Right. You made that extraction. 
Come on, man. No, no, you have made that assumption. Because, you just said okay, they, meant, they didn't put, uh, they didn't put uh, a thing in place. No, no, meaning, meaning, meaning that they, they regard democratic elections and voting for someone who rules by other than Islam, right, to be asal, that is haram anywhere and, and everywhere. That, the thing is, look, like someone saying, Abdullah, am I correct in that understanding, bro? Generally yeah. speaking, yeah. saying carrying is haram. Yeah. yeah. Now, we might think it's so clear and obvious to go and apply this ruling to something you find in the supermarket, right? It's clear and obvious they've said it, and then we can give lots of emotional arguments about how carrying is haram and it's not emotional. Meta and so on and so forth. No, 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 you can't but say it's, it's emotional. emotional. Emotional blackmail, okay. I would say, you know, religious that's, emotional that's, that's blackmail. That's a tad harsh. Uh, both, both camps do this, yeah? Okay, good. Because I can say, oh, astaghfirullah, you're disagreeing with the Quran, Allah says, hurrimat alaykum al and all of these things. But the issue is, at the end of the day, he's going to say, fine, fair enough. I agree with you. But I'm saying this piece of, this chicken drumstick here is not meta, right? So the point is, we can construct an argument that's very irresistible to say, and that's what I'm voting, putting, about, putting your X in your box mm. is is legislation. But, and okay. But, but the fact of the matter you. is, the unavoidable fact of the matter is that look how many... Then first of all, look into your own place. Okay, how many imams, how many scholars, right, are pushing us to vote in our area who understand the landscape in our that's, situation? That's not an argument. Regardless, no, 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 let the, alone the Christians, the council. Christians, and the, the the people of previous revelation, they had ulama. This, what, 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 what does the Quran? What does the Quran ulama from going astray? Um, on mass, uh, yeah. collectively, but yes. it does not mean that there isn't but ulama is the, that would what, not go astray. As so, well, what is the right? alternative? There's so many. Also, there's, there's so many the alternatives. Alternative. Alternative. Thing, and this is this is not my issue in voting, by the way. This is for all all examples. Also, of just, this, just, also just I call issue. it like this, no no disrespect the DIY culture of okay. looking oh, at just, wait, 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 wait a second, uh, wait a second. I, I, again themselves. I'm I I didn't uh, this is not my 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 fatwa I didn't come I mean you know, well, what it, I'm contending in these debates is if we have if we have if we have I'm I'm, I'm, I'm merely I'm merely a Mokalid following and um, higher authorities my only issue is that okay you have your high authority and I have my high authority in terms of scholarship now as a Mokalid it is behoven upon me to at least to, it behooves me to check the argument from one and the argument from the other. But it has to and, be and well, it has to be the same point that I'm discussing. Here, yes, yes. One is discussing, look at your example. And I did. One is discussing the theory I take, look, let, of let, legislating let me finish against my point. And one is discussing the fatawa in um, your all I've, context. All, all, I've ever, all I've ever heard from any of these, these debates and discussions is um, the authorities... Yeah, which, let, let's wrap up on this one okay, yeah, before we the, move the on. Authorities, the, the, authorities, the, authorities yeah. the, the authorities that I've followed... With the backing and invocation of classical oh. scholars like Ibn Tamir on the on the Mongol, but, uh, obviously, but, but let me obviously he's gonna talk about <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. Ibn right. Tamir did um, not talk about voting yeah. for Labour. He conservative. talked. He talked about um, Muslims who uh, appoint leaders over them who will rule with um, a, a kind of Mongolian uh, kind of hybrid system uh, of, of laws and ideas from uh, Yassir, Yassir and he and also Sonra. said Muslims giving to, uh, giving wilaya and and. And getting non-Muslims to to rule over them is permissible. So, right? so, so, sorry, sorry. Um, he said that getting non-Muslim. Uh, sorry, so yes, Muslims. The point, that's Muslims the point. are allowed to appoint a non-Muslim yes. leader upon them. Yes, I need to see a text on that. That's but, the point. But, um, You'll find just both to, to furnish either I, argument. I have, I have that's not, why I haven't been have cherry picking to get. I have not, uh, uh, I have not uh, encountered that from the history. But let, let me just finish my my, my, my point. Right? I thought so, it was my turn. <laughs> no, no, it's one. Okay, then please continue. Go on. Go on. I'll finish. I'll finish. <laughs> um, okay, in, in, I want the viewers also who are watching this as well to kind of see what's happening. Inshallah. I've given some, I've given texts, I've given reasoning um, based not not my derivations of it. These are the reasonings I given would by the that scholars. they are okay. your derivations. With all due respect, it might well, seem abundantly clear that this text is clear. But, this but, you, but, you, but, you, is clear. but you don't know, you don't know um, which scholars I'm following or who I'm. Um, but who by, I'm by virtue of you mentioned scholars that lived 700 years ago, like Sheikh Hassan Ibn Taymiyyah. No, I, uh, oh, I okay. said, I, no, I didn't. No, 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 no. Salman. Be just to Abdullah's question. I, I tell no, you no, just by yeah. mentioning. Well, why else would someone mention? No, no, no. no. He's oh, talking, and he's, then let me tell you why. I he's talking about. He's talking about the, the principle of. Le you. 
Abdullah, I don't mean to. I agree on the principle. I agree on all that okay. kind of stuff. But, but that is the theory when it comes to implementation. Do you know what I? Do, do, do you know what I, I, I didn't mention? I didn't finish my, my point. Let yeah. me just say, give me one minute, and okay. then you can yeah, you can chime in all you want. I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So I'm saying that from my obser- observation of the debate, and I want obviously people at home to notice um, what's happening in this discussion. Is so I've given uh, given texts and bases um, which convinced me of the understanding of these scholars um, which I follow. What I've seen always the case lacking is the other side um, have failed to provide why um, voting in the West is an, is not the same. It's not the same situation. They've not never they've, they've not able to discuss it. They just say. The only arguments that I've seen him provide is it will um, being involved in it provides more ease for Muslims. I can talk or, about that. Um, talk about or, that. Or, or more more ease for Muslims or non-Muslims, uh, ease of life, but nothing nothing else. And based on Islamic discussions on what I mean, like the, the early Muslims, they uh, abolished the idols in the Kaaba, even though that would um, cause economic problems for them. They were worried about ease and, uh, and so on. But the principle was yeah, the Kaaba should only be. That's yeah, yeah. So no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying that um, simple, simple discussions of ease were not sufficient Nobody's talking to make about the, the haram and haram. Just, just, just slight. Yeah, it's a circular just slight, just, just slight argument. Just slight You're difference. presuming it's haram. Yeah. Just slight. Plus, you don't know what will, will actually so, really create ease. Slight, and exactly. Yeah. So, so slight on the defense of the other side than a counter defense. Or the other yeah sure from my engagement with brothers like Salman with, with certain mashayikh and certain tulab al-ilm sure. from that side they said that look it is fundamentally okay fine let's even put the haram issue of haram kafir bit side sure. it's to do with the fact that look where can we where can we kind of Muslims establish or try to attain some level of benefit Right, some sort of benefit and goodness in a particular scenario or in certain areas and prevent harm was that good was that was it Generally? But the point is, the 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 circular the circularity is still there. That this we have these echoes of those fatawa that think you know will make us think voting is something dirty. No, no, right. no, no, no. We've, right. not even, we've not even got to that. I think that whole, this whole lesser of two evil argument that ship has long sailed, bro. Since the likes of yourself have come onto the scenes, but that's that's finished now. <laughs> now, as you mentioned, it's about wajib and permissibility. It's not even mm-hmm. to do with that. So what I'm trying to say is that when I've engaged with yourself and others on a, in a brotherly way to try kind of understand without the mm-hmm. bats, I've understood that is to do with in a particular situation in the United Kingdom, even respectively in a certain constituency yeah. or certain parties, where can the Muslims gain some benefit? Well, what, no, where can you exercise, exercise. your divine okay. duty? Okay, fine. Right? Fine. To minimize harm and increase. Fine. So what uh, I am now going to do the counter counter. So mm-hmm. I've, 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 do you think I fairly kind of simplified that position? It's just a question. I mean, Plus, so in, to a counter a counter counter to that then is that even from usul al fiqh from a normative Islamic jurisprudence point of view, to calculate harm and benefit is something that requires tangible calculation of con- of potential consequences. That's only if you regard. Voting as something bad in the first place, but then why are you using the, the, then why are you using the principle of harm and benefit? This is the principle then? that governs I, I the whole of Sharia, uh-huh. right? I didn't say voting. The the, the, the Sharia, the the, yeah. the 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 mukallaf, right? Mm. The the morally counter individual, mm. he or she is obl- obligated to reduce a munkar wherever they can, or to increase a good wherever they can, right? The good part is not necessarily an obligation, but it's obligation to get rid of a munkar or diminish it as much as you can, right? Now, the point is to say, well, how sure are you that that's going to happen? It's only, it only comes into the discussion when if somebody thinks that the process is haram in the first place. So why because do, when something is haram... So why do, so why do certain mashayikh, so why do certain respected I scholars... That. Why, point, why do they then say, refer to the likes of men, refer to the likes of MCB, refer to the likes of man? Why not? Why shouldn't they? So, so, but then why would they do it? Because so you they can make an informed decision. But you just said that it wouldn't even be an issue of being an informed decision if, if you believe that it wasn't haram. But if it's something haram, yeah. Akhi, the bar for participation is high. Okay. So right? you're so, i.e. Okay. pretty much you have to do you can only do it if it's avoiding a bigger haram. Okay, even right? if it okay, even if it's not haram. But so, if so it's not haram, haram, yeah, then you still have an obligation to do your due diligence of where the harm and benefit is. To try and um uh make the best choice Fine. according to the so the, both. the the, so, the tools at your disposal. Okay. Hey. The tools at our disposal are, you know, they vote for you.com or 
uh, whatever website the men the get, get, the, get the, the plugs in I've done the plug so yeah. now based on that okay so now based on that I want to now I think we spent an hour 10-15 minutes mm. on this right I do apologize but do you want to talk users. about democracy because we didn't mention no no so, no so this okay look viewers I had lots of things planned for this episode Allah he I did <laughs> yeah I genuinely did look you can even see my note my editor Dills is going to look I had so many things to discuss mm. right you can add it on the screen afterwards. Yeah, but it, no, it's just a bit more personal, you know what I mean, yeah? <laughs> Look, I had lots of things to Show discuss. Business. Brexit, good or bad for Muslims, manifesto pledges, and all these things. But I had a very bad feeling that this, conversa this conversation was going to continue. But you know what? It is what but it to is. To be honest, it's irrelevant. If it somebody is what it is. think it's haram in the first place, then it doesn't matter whether Brexit or whatever, right? Well, it kind of yeah. does. Because, because it's, it's kind of Brexit is, is a different discussion. Okay, so... Oh, so, so, okay, so, so label, okay, so haram... Permissible borderline obligation. Basically, yeah? my opinion is voting in a, any system, it could occupy one of the five ahkam taklifiya, depending on the context. The fatwa is specific for specific okay. times and places. So, based on so all the way from haram, we, all the way to wajib, mm -hmm. right? Haram, uh, makro, uh, mubah, mustahad. Sunnah as well. Yeah. That shouldn't be oh, surprising. That's yeah, the point. Yeah, yeah, voting that's is not, just, I'm trying to make a, 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 I'm trying to. Um, but you're saying voting as introduce a different I, way. I don't, of Abdullah, I, I, don't, I don't think Abdullah has a problem with voting as yeah, a mechanism in, to in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in UK, for example. Voting. Right. Okay, let me ask you another question. Voting in any secular democracy, in the, whether it's Muslim world or the yeah. UK, you do No, it could. Can, it, the, 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 that's what I'm saying. The fatwa cannot be constructed in theory. It has to, from the beginning, take into context. The the choices for the mukallaf. So do you think right? that do you think that Ikhwan for example the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do you believe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do you believe the Ikhwan al-Muslimin in Egypt? One second, one second. Go on. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the example they use. Can text for example of Itbar al-Ma'alat. Yeah, of looking at the consequences when when you can give him a fatwa. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, um, "Can I kiss my wife uh, while I'm fasting?" Right. A man comes up and asks him. He says, "Yes. Why not?" Another man comes up to him and asks the same question. He says, no. Okay. And the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, how come you gave one yes fatwa to a person one, and no hukum to another person? He said, the first person who, who came, he said, I gave a yes to. He said, he's an old man. Nothing's going to happen if he kisses his wife when he's fasting. The second person who comes up to me is a young man. He's newly married. You know, if we, paraphrasing obviously, if we that's take... Con, that's can, contextual to an old yeah. man and a young man, his urges, etc, etc. Yes, et exactly. How about, up, the, how about and, the fact And the prevention of an existing understanding of halal and haram, which is you're not allowed to engage in sexual intercourse while you're fasting, okay. which we someone, understand. Someone can ask you something, bro. Mm -hmm. You know when the leaders of Quraysh uh, approached the Prophet wasallam mm -hmm. in Mecca and said, that, look, Ya Muhammad, you rule for one year, we rule for one year, and we can alternate between one another. Excellent example. Yeah. You know what? Since so that so narration I, 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 I haven't finished. Sorry. <laughs> so there, well, there, so, the, so, 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 so there one could say that the Prophet ﷺ had the opportunity to rule by Sharia for one year uninterrupted mm -hmm. and then alternate with the with the pagan Arabs of Quraysh. And you know what? From that one year, Islam's justice could have overwhelmingly convinced people that that's a better system. Mm -hmm. But he opted quite clearly not to do that. Right? Yeah. And it's a very powerful argument. But yeah. what is your conclusion? A lot when that when those narrations became popular, people didn't quote, stop quoting the other narrations that used to be quoted alongside them. Like when some tribes would enter the country of Islam and said, you know, for example, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna accept Islam, but we won't pay zakat and we won't uh, fight jihad. Right? Prophet Islam yeah. accepted it. They call this is even a there's even a, a chapter in fifth which, which, which uh, uh, al Islam ma shart al fasid right um, accepting Islam alongside a an evil or a, a corrupt condition or a haram condition or something in what would normally be haram. Uh, five years. What, right? what tribes were they that that that, that was? Uh, I forgot the the tribe. Uh, was, this in, was, this in, was this in Makkah or Medina? I can't remember. But that's pretty important. Probably, actually, it must be Medina. Because of the otherwise they wouldn't uh, send zakah was uh, obligatory obligated in. But we also know that the second year counter, there are, there and are, jihad was obligated. There are counter examples. But the point is the pro um, there's always counter examples. That's why the correct I would I would argue the, the correct methodology of fiqh is not to choose one and stick to it, <clears> but rather look at the mukallif 
right at the particular time and place. I think this discussion boils down to two things, and and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ultimately simplify. I don't care if both of you agree with me or not. I think it boils down to just just watching this as 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 a spectator. Well, who there? Who's knocked on my door? Subhanallah. <laughs> anyway, we're podcasting. Yeah. For labor. Yeah. <laughs> if fundamentally, it actually could be, you know. Yeah. Uh, fundamentally, it seems to boil down to that Abdullah, the position he has adopted from those fuqaha also, is that voting in secular democracies, which is in its essence, basis is haram. Yes? Not voting. You said not voting. Voting. Like I, I, I said voting. You said legislating. No, no, no. But voting no, no, like someone voting. listen to me, please. Voting in a secular liberal democracy, in essence, is giving the power to legislate, is it not? That's the issue. Wait, so, wait, no, wait, wait, not. wait, 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 wait. According wait. to the Sharia, it, it the Sharia is, has its own lens that it looks at it things gives, through. Um, it, it basically gives consent and establishes um, doles to legislate by all okay. people on the field. And, 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 and therefore, this is the whole and from your position. Is this is and the whole from, the from your the, position. So, so, so that's Abdullah. And from your position, I'm trying to simplify from the way I'm seeing it. Yeah. You see it in its asal to be haram because the system is kafir and, and to allow man to legislate other than Allah, um, other than what Allah has revealed. From a source. Okay. From a source, yeah, yeah. From Quran and Sunnah, what Allah has revealed to be haram. You, on the other hand, deem it not even to be an issue. Deem what? To be voting yeah. in, in, in these democratic elections. And, I would, and, and my contention is, is I look at the list of scholars, legislators. They, wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't say voting in that system either uh, what my contention is what they're talking about is the system itself a kufr system obviously the, they're talking about a kufr system and what some people are doing are um taking those statements and applying it to voting that's the thing i would no, agree with you to voting in a kufr in, system in, in, in this system, for legislators yeah. who rule by kufr. i would say i would yeah. say this would apply had the choice been that or something else, the but, Sharia. But Abdullah is saying at, to you, Abdullah no, is saying to you, there is a choice. The choice is you don't. You don't have to vote. Yeah, the, the point did is, you know that the, the choice the, of the, the Jehovah's Witnesses the put, they're putting a lot of Muslims to shame. Jehovah's Witnesses, as a principal part of their religion, <laughs> because they believe that um, uh, human governments are corrupt and you, and therefore uh, to witness to God, they believe. They, they abstain from participating in, in voting. And, and they are they, the perfect they are minority wait, for um, the establishment. They, they await. They're not going to uh, represent a threat to your seat, are they? You can do, uh, you can do whatever they want with them. They, okay, they, it's fine. No, no, but the, the ideal minority is establishment pretty minority. establishment want people to vote because it legitimizes. No, the, I would argue against They need they the don't. consent. They need the consent. How many? To how many the power. How, how, They're reducing the number of people you, voting. Just to ask you both a question. I mean, Sufyan Ismail, the founder of MEND, he published a piece on something byline. It was actually a good byline, piece. Yeah, yeah in terms of, inf from an informational point of view, it was, it was a good piece. And he said that the general voter apathy and non-engagement is around 30 to 35 percent from uh, Britain generally. For Muslims, it's 45%, yeah? yeah. yeah? yeah. So I want to ask you both a question. I'm going to move away from this ruling now because we've literally only got half an hour and our cameraman Dills is screwing, bruv, yeah? <laughs> Bless him. Are you all right? Yeah, you're good, Dills. Hey, give me a love to you, my brother. So, look, so, 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 so kind of now, Alhamdulillah, I moved away from this now, but I want to now say- Do you want to talk you know, about democracy then? <laughs> so, so man, I thought it, that's what we've been doing all yeah, this time. That's, that, that's the issue, Akhi, that's what I'm saying. Democracy, we're mixing up all of these things. So okay, okay, no, okay, really. okay, okay, fine, we'll come back to that. But I want to ask you both a, a very quick question. Okay. And you know what? I might as well ask these very mm. quick questions and don't start taking war and peace. And we can revisit this exact same conversation. I'm going to ask you guys simple questions. I beg you, just give me yeah or nay mm -hmm. with at least 30 seconds. And then we can re we go back to what we started with. Mm -hmm. Is Brexit good or bad for Muslims from your understanding? I'd say Allah. You don't think it's either yay or nay? Well, you could, there's, there's two perspectives. You could say that uh, uh, a more divided Europe would mean um, less um, colonial adventures around the world. Or you could say that uh, the people, the, the common people in England, the poor people would suffer uh, due to, let's say, you know, um, bad trade deals with, uh, obviously, with America dominating England and not. Uh, and of course, the rights protections that um, some people like uh, could find e easy to hide behind get versus some of the governments that want what they want to, uh, so, so, want to do. So all I can say is Allahu Alam, but the, it will have to look at the, if we were, if we were the Khidr, we can ask him, okay. but we're not. Salman, is Brexit good or bad for Muslims from your understanding? Well, it could be... You're a Remainer from what I recall. Yeah. So <laughs> the EU is generally bad, but yeah. Brexit is also bad. As Why? Well. Um, because we have a better chance at um, preventing or... or 
getting involved in the the, the mechanism mechanics of the EU if we're in it, okay. rather than being on the sidelines from it. Fine. Okay. So so that's one question out of the way. I want to ask you another question. How many? I know there's no data to prove this. How many Muslims do you actually think are having this discussion? I don't C- think many. Considering that forty five percent. Is, I it, think our is issue it? is apathy. Yeah. Our issue is so 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 someone. How many Muslims do you think are having this conversation that we're, we're having right now? Just us three. <laughs> no, no. Come on. You know what I mean. Gossip it. I don't know. I mean, it's in my experience, and I've spoken to people on the grassroots as well, and you know, doing the the activism. This is the the kind of halal haram debates. Alhamdulillah, from my perspective, is is dying out. So we can. So why does it keep reoccurring every election? Um, because of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because of you. <laughs> Maybe because of those who say that it's obligation as well. That, yeah, that's, that, I mean, yeah. Yes, but, yeah. I mean, I'm naturally, if you're going to have a respect, I mean, that, is, that is not for that is not uh, t- catered to the ha- people who believe it's haram. That's catered for the people who are well, it is if you think it's asleep. But it kind of is because if you say it's obligation, that means those who don't do it's hot, they're sinful, right? Yeah, that's to wake people up. If somebody is set that this is haram, yeah, they're. You know, those who have who are gonna change their opinion have changed it by so now. So you don't think many those Muslims? So you don't think many Muslims are having this permissibility impermissibility discussion? I don't think so. I think it's one group in particular. I won't mention that. <laughs> Who's that group? The beloved brothers. Uh, uh, His yeah. hey, Okay, fine. But, uh, but by I, the way, I love the I love no. the senior brothers. I love them to bits. You know, they're my boys. But uh, this is the uh, you know just one thing. Do you think it's about. a fair? Do you think it's, it's fair to say that this this conversation, this entire debate, is is nearly always restricted just to the his, and that no one. Have, well, because of the well, many the Salafis, brothers, brothers, well, well, many Salafis hold this position, but many Salafis yeah, from the nineties. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, yeah. there's a significant amount of Salafis yeah. that hold that hold that position. I still hold that and, position, and, and yeah, and, and many. But are, it's hard for them to and, hold that cognitive dissonance because they're. <laughs> but I don't all think of this, it's all fair, of this. But, but, but as I said, I mean, and and, and also even in um, the uh, some Shias who follow Muhammad Bakr al-Sadr, who wrote a book called so uh, uh, Fasa Fasuna. <laughs> yeah, don't joke. Yeah, Papa. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like I even know, uh, he, he, that he had. <laughs> but his first chapter, his first chapter was on um, uh, secular democracy. And who's this? this? Uh, Muhammad Bakr al-Sadr okay. as, a, as a Shia scholar. And uh, res- highly respected in uh, Iraq, uh, or he, put, he was killed by Saddam Hussein, of course. Rest assured, all the selfies are going to vote now because you've said <laughs> <laughs> maybe who knows? Yeah, I guess I, I don't know. Shia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he made the same arguments, uh, not just in the Muslim world, but also in the Western world, that mm. the participation in it is a derogation of Allah's rights in any context, um, whether it's in the West or in the Muslim world. So he said it very specifically, and he's not the only scholar who's ever said that. But I'm just, I only mentioned him because it just cites that sh- even, even, amongst, even amongst the Shia, they have the same discussion, okay. not just amongst the Shia. Okay, so, okay, 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 no, no, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, 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 so do you think that this conversation is also within a minority of Muslims as well? Um, but I mean, as to the average, you know, let's say average Joe on the street, what, what are they discussing? Um, I would say it's significant, of- significant enough such that um, many uh, politicians within the British government have remarked on the need to get more Muslims engaged in voting, even though they might be representing parties which you'd think would be, um, let's say, not not too friendly with with uh, with Muslim interests. Have any Tories encouraging voting for Muslim? I mean, or just look at I mean, just look at the government prevent agenda and how it it discusses that uh, Muslim voting apathy. Um, no is apathy, they, 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 view they view it. They view it. They viewed it as one of the uh, markers of quote unquote what they call extremism. The modern, no, the modern didn't. version of um, being called a heretic or heresy. Or heresy. Not voter apathy. They said those who believe that apathy. apathy. They, they, sorry, they, those who make uh, conscientious, to conscientious to disengagement or whatever you want to call it. Um, sorry, they, so I'll, I'll clarify. Muslims who make conscious dis- disengagement. Obviously, not not Jehovah's Witnesses, of course. But just Muslims, yeah. How did you um, even get named the Home Office press release? If they knew what you we know, <laughs> well, you, they'd be having you for my, Home Office. My argument, I contend, is that if somebody is against voting, then they're 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 a neutral threat. They're not gonna, you know, not necessarily. Not if they're convi- or participation. Not, not if they're convi- the not, not, if they're, not if they're convincing other Muslims not to vote. They're just convincing them not. If they're convincing them partic- not to participate, yeah, then they they they're the ideal minority for yeah. the establishment. Okay. Not the well, status quo. Um, okay. Not well. I'll say I'll say not really because one of the, the when the arguments that are made in many um, kind of government policy papers and discussions, um, you know, parliamentary dis- dis- discourses and so on amongst um, uh, certain parliamentary groups, which I've read, um, is that they view it. They view Muslims who do not engage with the electoral system uh, to vote for MPs in part of the legislature. 
as um, individuals who are not integrated with, with UK and could pose um, pose a political. I'm sorry, okay. they, they they are a problem for social cohesion. That's their term. Mm. Social cohesion. Yeah, but so they view they view things, them. Right? No, wait, no, but that's they view them as a the they view them as a discourse. no, they view them as a problem. Right now, here's the thing. When we discuss increasing or decreasing Monka, and here is the the, the, the issue that I think uh, someone hasn't really gone into detail, and I think the devil, the shaitan, is in the detail, <laughs> um, is is that Monka? What increases Monka? Is it voting for a party that um, says, okay, we all invest a bit more into the NHS, the national healthcare system, okay? Um, if we so vote, so not voting and allowing them to lose, does that increase um, Monka uh, the most, or is it um, making a public statement ratifying a system and bearing witness? In essence, what you're doing is you're bearing witness to the legitimacy of such a system when you've been commanded. Well, if you and don't, you're meant, let me finish, brother. Well, if you don't, let then. me finish. <laughs> um, by your very action, that's how it's understood, and therefore you're no longer bearing witness. Now you might say, "Well, I, you know, I don't view it like that." Yeah. But your your Nobody actions of you your actions of you just bearing witness as legit, okay. legit, legitimizing um, uh, a system, as well as wait wait where does the monk actually come from? Is it not that the fundamental capitalist system with the concentration of wealth inherent in it that even the left wingers can't change short of a Marxist revolution, of course, and that's a whole different other. Um, that's why that's what someone's voting Corbyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not yeah, true. Well, and Corbyn can't Same change fu the fundamental problem of the concentration of wealth. Um, which is which is fallacy. which is fundamental to the to its uh, so one can that's a perfection fallacy again the, see when when when, and uh, when I, if you look at it through the lens of sharia and, and the and fiqh right we find principles that uh, in our tarbiyah teach us to go away from that type of thinking I that didn't say ma la, is that, kullu, la jullu. that if something can't be completely overhauled and it shouldn't be you shouldn't even try no to, that's not what i'm uh, saying uh, i do the easy I, parts no i didn't say that i saying that I'm you're saying, saying that. let me look, look, look this is what i understood and tell me if it's right or not do i feel like Kathy you're saying speaking is, to me <laughs> you're saying <laughs> you're saying even corbyn or whatever can't only a marxist revolution would, uh, would overthrow the underlying uh, whatever no, um, uh, um, capitalist contradiction. I'm saying that I'm saying that the underlying to... problem um, won't be addressed. Now, I didn't I didn't say it would be ameliorated better under Corbyn either, actually, because the argument from the other side, anyone who knows um, economics about the matter, is the the big dichotomy in a Western capitalist system is more tax breaks for the rich, which um, are entrepreneurs, which will invest into the society and will bring um, bring more jobs. Which Labour says will tax more. Yeah. Labor Whereas that they, will they, they say that would, in, that, that would increase that would in, that would increase economic growth the best. Whereas the other madhab, right, socialists and others, will say that public spending. more um, sorry, yeah, Labour said yeah, that more taxes, more public spending and um, more taxes upon the rich will be better for the the people. But what if on here's a problem dichotomy is if you pull on if you pull one side you know it, it like it um you there's a disadvantage always for example you might increase taxes for the rich and then they might say right fine we're gonna basically go a bit more offshore we're gonna go we're gonna move our ed, ed, um, headquarters elsewhere and then the british economy suffers which is the argument of neoliberalists in the right wing right and they have an argument for that Right. Nothing would make and, me and, happier uh, for you to discuss those arguments, but using yeah. that as a justification for uh, a haram fatwa, that is the issue here. If no, you, no, no, if you, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to genuinely more believe, for making a halal believe, fatwa, or even no, a no, fart, no, it's not, it's a not even, fatwa. A, it's not even uh, the hukum doesn't even come in before that point. We're saying no, that I'm just saying the you, person, you're the one that believes that if we do X then why is going to happen definitely? Firstly, I I'm say... I'm not saying definitely. Okay, this okay. Is okay. okay. The well, Allah only takes us according to the what the balance of probability is, right? And this, again, this the balance, this happens the balance of when... Probability. But there's not yeah. even... So, for example, in the there's Prophet, not even a likelihood. Hadith, the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, uh, the companions came to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they, you know, the Hadith went... Uh, one of them woke up in Janaba. He had an issue with his head. They done wudu on him. He passed away. He made him wudu yeah. on him. He passed away. Yeah. And he said, "They killed him." May Allah. Him. Okay. You know, may Allah curse him. But Samad, so Samad. So, okay, okay, okay. Look, brother, the point brother. is, they couldn't have known for certain. Okay. It's not a, a condition. Mm. This is again one of the. But you're missing. You're still missing the. It's point. It's not a condition to know you, for certain the outcome and it of down. a fatwa. Of, of a course of action, but Allah is holding you responsible for what the 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 the, the greater 
uh, van is, right? the, the greater, in speculation, what is most credibly anticipated. And that is what Allah will hold us to account for. Right. So are you saying certain harms and benefits from respective parties and their manifesto pledges are quite clear where it could be beneficial, where Muslims can bring benefit? Absolutely. Okay, fine. Absolutely. So, 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 so let me just let me just go over some of the things. So I, I, I had a look at the Labour manifesto, right? And I thought to myself, what kind of things would be appealing to Muslims or what's at least being... Uh, informed the Muslim public like seen the graphic men did. Yeah, like men did. They did like a league table. It's, yeah. it's quite fancy it's and nice. Clear. Yeah, pardon? It's clear. 27 versus 5. Yeah, so again, that's... <laughs> the scores. Yeah, so 27 right. to Labour, 5 to Tories, yeah? yeah. In so, terms of Muslim issues. Yeah, on, on Muslim-related issues. So, so but, but even then, there were things within the Labour manifesto, like... Obviously, free broadband and four day working week, those sick. things are sick, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, they, sold. as a party, they've adopted the APPG's definition of Islamophobia. Mm. Uh, mm. Corbyn said that his government will recognize a two state um, um, uh, Palestine uh, on the 1967 borders, etc. etc. Mm -hmm. However, in the same manifesto, uh, Labour pledged that they will decriminalize. Uh, abortion so that children can be legally murdered right up to birth. Wait, wait. They didn't say that. No, no, they did. No. What did they say? That then? was what anti-abortion think tank said that they said. No, no, so it's, it's not about... They didn't no, say... No, it, 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 it's, it's in the manifesto. Against, it's in the manifesto. No, not about against it until is. birth. A future Labour government will provide sufficient funding for schools to deliver mandatory LGBT plus inclusive relationships and sex education. Um, Labour is committed to reforming the Gender Recognition Act 2004 to introduce self-declaration for transgender people. Uh, the manifesto mentions LGBT 16 times, only mentions Muslims mm -hmm. once, uh, and that's in relation to Sri Lanka. Why do you think that is? Yeah, just wait. What well, you think about mentioning Muslims would be bad for the votes. Why do you think that is in terms of Muslims... Okay, well, I guess Muslims, uh, well, needs, uh, maybe according to you because, because we're apathetic and we don't engage. Is that what it is? Not too many of us. That's okay. what I'm saying. The okay. community is it a has made, giant. It's not. It's not made mm -hmm. any. It's not made any overt commitments to tackling Islamophobia or ending the Islamophobic and racist prevent policy. It has so, committed to a independent, full independent review of all counterterrorism. Yeah, bro. They, yeah, they, bro. They all say independent. Who realize the people reviewing the no, one exact independent? Bro, the you know who Dianaba is? Which party is? brought in Prevent? Dianaba is the Shadow Home yeah, Secretary, yeah, okay. bro. Okay, so he's a legend. So, 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 Abdullah, I want to know from Salman because according to yourself and those who deem it to be haram, this is more of a question positive to Salman. Given that oh. Labour has made it quite clear, yeah, okay, fine. So there's some issues that seem very appealing to Muslims. Yeah, yeah. It seems on, on paper seems very appealing to Muslims. How do we then justify, from an Islamic standpoint, Labour's very clear uh, manifesto pledges uh, to LGBT inclusive curriculums, uh, investing millions of pounds, your tax, you pay tax on one. So you don't follow the ruling that you don't pay tax to the Kufr system, right? So your uh, tax, my tax, our tax question. money, our tax money is going to be used to teach our children. I'm not a father, you're a mm -hmm. father of three beautiful sons, yeah? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, homeschooled. Homeschooled, sick. You're mm. such a sick guy. <laughs> but most are go to state schools. Most go to state schools. And they and Labour Party is going to invest millions of pounds into that. They've made that pledge. As well as the issue of abortion. Right, mm -hmm. as well as the issue on the transgender self self uh, um, uh, identification, right? All of these issues. How do you justify that for back in Jazza from an Islamic standpoint? Islamically, is very simple, right? Allah is holding you to account based on the differences that you have before you. Okay, if you believe genuinely everyone's exactly hundred percent the same, then you can argue. You know, not voting is gonna, you know, won't make a difference, and you won't be held accountable for the result. If you do perceive a difference, right, on the one hand and on the other hand, Labour and Tory, if we go by the two two party system, whatever, and not to mention just having your relationship with your local MP, so when he votes for something or she votes for something, they take your position into account as amongst as as well as the rest of the the people, right, in the constituency. You have a, a relationship with them, you can talk to them, you can lobby them, you can, you know, get uh, get your voice heard by them. Then this is what the Sharia is looking at. What are your options and which one do you choose? The Sharia is not going to, Allah is not going to hold you to account. Why didn't you overthrow the system? Not overthrow, right? but, but no, 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 why no, no. didn't you so, well, how come, change the system? Okay, how come you right. voted for a Labour MP in your yeah. constituency who has openly said that I will unequivocally back LGBT inclusive 
curriculum and education my party will fund that to teach your children in primary schools i will i as your labor mp who you voted for because mm -hmm. you want jesse in power that i also believe that women should have the right to have an abortion up to 40 weeks if that's the case which is not the case i'm saying well, how, how, argue, why, why are you saying they didn't say that they didn't well, say why, that why are you saying that's not they the case? said they would commit to they would commit reviewing to reviewing uh, old uh, abo anti-abortion laws. Yeah, with, right? with, with, with the it's intention, not, not, mean, not review, no, no, with, no, the, no, with the intention to give women that right to have that no, abortion. No, no, yes, not up to forty yeah, weeks. Yeah. Okay, they then, did not then, say then, then what then? You can Google it. You no. can control no, F. No, no, no. So, so tell me, then up to what then? That's not, that's up, that's going to be discussed and debated in parliament. Okay, but the if point, they win. The, but the point of reviewing the point policy. Is, look, the, the point is, when you're voting for, when you're choosing your vote, okay. The point is, you look at the different manifestos. Okay, and you have to be realistic with the pledges. It's not a hundred percent, and it's not absolutely no no. Uh, so how do we trust any of the pledges? The point is, some how do we things, trust any of the pledges? Some things governments have the ability to deliver. Some things like LGBT, say, like LGBT inclusive yeah, policy, maybe. as some a as opposed to recognizing Palestine. Maybe some things they may uh, say that we're going to. This is our legislative program. Mm -hmm. Right, we're going to. I don't know. You don't like that word. We're going to. Uh, you know, propose these laws and, and repeal these laws and so forth. It is perfectly fathomable for you to vote for the the party, and at the same time, when the when the um, uh, that particular vote comes to table, uh, you you lobby that you lobby your local MP and say you know and get your community to vote against that thing. Okay. Right. And that would make, arguably, if there's something so evil, it would be wajib for you to lobby that person. And it would be wajib, wajib for you to try your best to uh, campaign against that uh, law which is bringing about evil and so on and so forth. On a concluding right. comment, before I hand it over to Abdullah, mm. and, and we are going to wrap the podcast up now. Um, just on a concluding comment, Salman, I've heard you post and say, we're on certain mutual groups, where you said, look, voting isn't the end all and be all. Yeah. There are many other important things we need to be doing outside of the ballot box. What are those things? If it's not the end all and be all, so the voting power? gets your MP into power, yep. right? Into the position as opposed to the other MP. Okay. Right? Not in an, a, a vacuum or yeah. an, a, any abstract sense. Um, then you have to have a good relationship with that MP. Mm. Okay. Keep an eye on them, what they, wh where they're voting, how they're voting. If there are important issues to us, and yeah. there are very important issues to us, have a relationship with them. Go and visit them, speak to them, send letters to them when you're angry about something. And we all vent on social media and stuff. It's very easy to. Um, Bro, let me tell you something. Well, like to your let me just say something in my uh, defense. To, let me just say something in yeah. my defense. Well, a lot of the people of Bedford and even Dills is here. He's easy. Our cameraman is a local brother I grew up with. People in Bedford know that I have very good relationship and, and in terms of all my respective MPs. I account them. I remind them. I visit them. I vent at them. I engage the community to organize, to hold them to account. I don't and if they to, don't listen to you, we stick it on them. Then yeah. you don't vote for them in the next election. No, nah, I don't, I don't know yeah. about that. <laughs> but you're relying on other people to yeah. do that. That's the point. Not right? necessarily. Bro. So voting no, isn't the be all and end. No, no, but I, because I, because voting I, is like... Because I think... To, I think to some degree, because I, I I think whether it's a Tory MP or a Labour MP, and we've had both, we've had Richard Fuller, before him Patrick Hall, in terms of Bedford, and now we have Mohammed Yassin. I've got my personal views with regards to who was easier to engage with and communicate mm. with and get my points across. Uh, but in terms of how they fundamentally differ in terms of policies and what they're looking to implement, pff, I don't really see much difference. Bro. Yeah, so you want to have the one who's difference. easier to, who's more open and, and, and more frank with you to get into power. Right? The point is, lobbying and, and all the good stuff, activism, it doesn't mean anything without teeth. Without the threat of that person so what's the, so you're, so afraid you're, of losing his so, job. So, so you're saying the ballot box and the vote is the teeth? It's part of it because if somebody doesn't the canine fear, or the, the canine or the molar, if somebody doesn't fear, is it the canine or the molar? It's important. If somebody does not fear that yeah. they will lose their job if uh, when held to account, they will not care about pretty much won't care about that community. And those are your right. and that is why I would contend Muslims or I Islamic issues are only mentioned four or five times and LGBT. Uh, things I mentioned how so many times because manifested. you believe as a community because as, long as, as a more community when we wake up when we this is a sleeping giant mashallah this community this Muslim community we need to realize that we have a lot of potential and Allah will hold us to account based on what he gave us not based on you know, uh, uh, something that's outside of our sphere of influence. This is well established in the Sharia. La You know, one dirham beat 100,000 dirhams. One dirham uh, is more beloved, given to charity than 100,000 dirhams. The point is, we have 
Um, scholarship, with, with big issues like this, look at fit councils, look at, you know, um, how the Sharia looks at things, not necessarily as our contemporary world is respect, how we might, from a Western uh, philosophical paradigm, might look at things and, and build up arguments like that. Okay, and just, no, but just and before, so you're back in Jaza, yeah? You're back in Labour? Yeah. And okay, Teak. Do you think Labour's going to win? My local is Tanmanji Desi. Yeah, you know, big up to Tanmanji. What's it mean? You know, he gave a good speech in Parliament in the defence of Nikab. What I was going to say was, what do you think the election results are going to be? I have absolutely no idea, but I know what they hope. I hope. If you if you were a betting man and it was allowed, would but you? It's not, and we don't answer questions. I don't. I'm not the school that we answer the theoretical questions. Okay, fine. Like what do you think the outcome will be? I don't know, bro. Have a have a stab last in the time, dark. Last time I said Labour would win, like a lot of the polls and I look stupid in the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fine. Abdullah, concluding comments, bro. Okay, so I think throughout this entire discussion, it hasn't been established that ease trumps truth. So truth, <laughs> uh, for Muslims, what is what, what bears witness for what bears um, as Muslims, we're, we're obligation is to bear witness to the truth. So even if the doing so goes against ourselves, as the Quran says, stand for for the justice, um, even against yourself. Um, he hasn't, I don't think my esteemed colleague has established that ease can trump truth. Tr truth goes first. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, the, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, <laughs> not, not really, because it's not so good. Um, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was basically offered to be the king of Medina, of Mecca for, for uh, actually just to be the king, not even for a year, just generally, we'll make you the king if you basically stop reviling our gods, not stop believing in one god, just stop attacking our gods. Mm. He could have done so many good for the poor people. In Mecca, he could have done so much. He could have raised. He used to um, obviously point out the hypocrisy of the rulers, of the nobles, how they treat the poor. But guess what? He didn't take that um, poison chalice because he had to bear witness to a better way of life, better system. So I don't think my esteemed colleague. Um, I don't think my esteemed colleague has demonstrated that ease is more important um, as, a, as our Sal priority than Salman. Let him finish. The fly to, that ease uh, and truth. Come uh, on. I, I was quiet from, you, from your <laughs> yeah, discussion come on. on Jezza. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Come on now. Um, JJ. As for, he, he did as not interject for, once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Discipline. Okay. Okay. Discipline. Go on. Okay. Um, and also, uh, even then, his his argument was, which was, well, it doesn't matter if benefit is not guaranteed as long as we go with what we think is the most beneficial. Um, the the parable of uh, Al Hidr is, is, is illustrative because Al Hidr he had permission from Allah Subhanahu to do what he did, and he knew the future what he's going to done. And then only because of those two things he could then do things which as were not allowed from ordinary people. So much so that that a prophet something that was with him was shocked by what he said, he did. Mm -hmm. Right, even a prophet was shocked. Right, so as we're not al Khidr, and as and, and Imam Ghazali, um, you know, famously discussed this example where if you're on a sinking ship, um, and there's you can save it if you if there's less if you weight, and, you, and the only weight that's left is people to throw off. Do you throw off people to save the, the ship? And they said, well, because you can't guarantee, because on, you can't man. guarantee the survival oh um, of the people anyway. Uh, and, and because um, killing is haram automatically, it's just uh, as an absolute thing, you could never throw people off that ship um, to save the, the rest of them, even if it means I agree, everyone, for the e everyone, everyone sinks. So I that's the, that's the case of ease. Stop interrupting. Ease being there. Anyway, stop it. He's there. He anyone accuses me of wanting to kill any individual. He's worried. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna convince he's voters gonna... not to vote. Let him finish. <laughs> okay. Him yeah. So Imam Khazali said, because you can't kill, you can't break that rule, um, even if it brings ease or save um, no, 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 save the greater uh, number of people. Um, so and the last point is political engagement. There's a difference between um, voting in elections for legislative individuals individuals in the legislature and getting actively involved. So I'm all for, um, you, you can elect councillors because councillors only talk about uh, uh, distributing <coughs> resources in the local area. They don't deal with legislation, right? You can um, take your cases to court and demand that they be consistent with their system. If you believe there's rights for all, then don't um, make an exception for Muslims. You can hold them to account to be consistent mm. with their own system. You can do lobbying, you can influence MPs like you do and just basically badger them um, uh, until they basically grow a conscience uh, for, for, for some of them. And you could do public dawah discussions, you could call people to a better way of life. You say, look guys- Petitions? Um, uh, petitions Civil too. disobedience? Um, uh, if, if, if it's yeah, required? Yeah, if, uh, within the, the limits of the law, of course. Um, you can do all that stuff, but guess what? In voting, voting in elections for legis legislatures, the go the governments don't want your opinion. You're not giving them your opinion. They just want your vote. They don't want your opinion. And don't conflate the two. You don't have a voice. You just have a. It's just a consent form. 
It's not a voice. So um, be careful and don't make those those uh, those kind of uh, those that mistake. So what I will say is this: is that basically, um, I think that my uh, so my esteemed colleague has not demonstrated that ease trumps truth. I think it is the, the debate between ease versus truth, and even with the debate, and right? even with the argument of of ease, <laughs> he hasn't demonstrated that they could either I'm guarantee any um, guarantee greater ease or, 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 or what have you Nobody's even going down ease. the action of or going down the pathway of engaging something that we would know otherwise is prohibited if not ease benefit again that well so is, that, is that not the benefit? same i'm not is, saying it's is, prohibited is, is that not is, is that not the same thing saying, because within islam it would be beneficial to bear witness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the sole legislator that is the greatest benefit okay brothers and sisters <laughs> um i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that i have generally been just uh, because those who know me know what position I follow and I've tried my best to be just and fair. What is that position? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I deem it to be haram. Just kidding. Too hard, so I, I but, but, but that said, I have voted before. I voted for my dad in the last council elections. He stood as independent. That's for a councillor. Yeah, and he lost by a vote. Uh, for whoever didn't vote then, that could have been gone on for you. You sure didn't make a mistake in voting both. <laughs> but anyway, brothers, uh, thank don't you very much. Um, <laughs> I love you both for the sake of Allah. And if anything we've taken from this engagement uh, is those of you who do get involved in these discussions, these engagements, these debates, do it in a brotherly fashion. If you're not going to do it respectfully as brothers or sisters, don't even have the discussion. I'll be honest with you. If you, if it's going to resort to uh, condescending comments, uh, you know, writing each other off, name calling, you know, accusing one one another, especially if you genuinely adopt a position, you we shouldn't be going about having those kind of fiery and divisive debates. Uh, it's, we're not about that because at the end of the day, after election, after December the twelfth, we're going to have to still get on as brothers and sisters and neighbours mm. in society. <clears throat> for this podcast, for those of you who are watching from North America, subscribe to the Mad Mum Looks. For those of you who want to watch it on the podcast audio platform, search the Mad Mum Looks. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to the Five Pillars YouTube channel. Uh, inshallah, leave a comment, uh, like the video, share the video, and inshallah, until next time, salam alaikum. Brothers Podcast, a five pillars of Mad Monarch production.